705. Let's call the meeting to order of the Sherburn Conservation Commission, May 6th, the virtual meeting by virtue of whatever. Um, is there anything um, that needs to be added to the agenda that could not have been reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance? Elizabeth, didn't you have something? I do. I'm going to put it under site issues or questions. It's a request to camp from the Boy Scouts. Okay. Oh, there was also a question about a fee, right? Fee, yes, we can do that under site issues too. <coughs> and we have the 240Bs, both of them are on the agenda. I forgot to check. Yes, they're both on the agenda. Okay, fine. Okay. Um, I don't see any time for poetry reading, but I'm going to do it anyway. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's just sort of part of our introduction. Whatever I'll read a poem, poem at the end. end. What's that? I'll read a poem at the end. How about that? Do you want to read a poem? No. <laughs> If I go mute, if I go mute and you don't hear from me, it's because I went to, I'm on the ZBA. We'll send somebody after you. You, you can try. <laughs> All right, here we go. Super quick, William Stafford. It's called Something You Should Know. They bring racing pigeons from everywhere and set them loose at time to intervals from Little America out in Wyoming. Every bird circles high, sets a course and banks away toward its right place, course for home. I've watched them come swift in the evening, wings flashing in the last of the sun, diving steeply down from the sky into some lone ranch in the junipers, lost to the world but centered for that pigeon's life, the soul's direction sure, like yours, like mine. Short and sweet. Did you know that like pigeons it. are also called rock doves and that they are a very successful bird species? They're in lots of places around the globe. Yeah, that's why they uh, do well on buildings because they're used to nesting on rocks and ledges. That's right. All right, let's jump in. Um, so uh, I, I see one person, it looks like Sue Tyler. Are you, Sue, are you here for the talk about the artificial turf? Uh, no, I'd I'm just curious as to what you're gonna say about it. Okay, because we were gonna we were gonna flip flop and do a little bit of land management before we do artificial turf. So if you're okay to hang in there, oh, that's the way we'll do it. Perfectly fine with me. Okay, thank you. All right, let's uh, Kelly go for it. Sure, I've presented two issues. The first is how to spend the rest of our money over the next uh, two months or so on <clears throat> Boeing and such, and that has to be decided this evening by consensus or vote. And the second is getting started on a <clears throat> maintenance plan for the barn so it doesn't deteriorate. And that's hardly urgent. That could be postponed or you could just agree with my proposal. I sent everybody a fairly detailed um, <clears throat> projection of <clears throat> what I think should be done in terms of mowing and land management for the next um, two months. And rather than going over it again, let me just see if there are questions or additions or anything like that. I, uh, sorry to throw this at you at the last minute, but I only just read your email this afternoon. Um, well, you've seen it, the essence of it a couple of times over the past two months. <laughs> that's okay, Kelly, I've been doing a little juggling. Um, so about Ed spreading the wood chips under the crab apples, I'm concerned about him doing that in the spring because it's it's adjacent to or part of a wetland. And I, I know we have uh, a notice of an order of conditions to do that, but I'm, you know, I'm worried that it's too wet and that he would be compacting soils. So um, the commission can decide if they want him to do that this spring. And my um, uh, alternative for what we could do with that money is something we've probably all forgotten, which is um, everybody was very gung-ho to put up a kiosk at the quarry, McGregor Quarry. And I did get a price for that of $400. So those are, you know, there's a balancing, a potential balancing act there. 
that the commission should consider? My only question about that, it, it's not just a timing issue, but a uh, kiosk at McGregor Quarry probably could quickly be added to the Forest and Trail Association priority list and they could pay, they would pay for it. Kelly, they have done nothing but turn down questions, requests for kiosks. I've made, I made several with them and they just, it's not a priority. Um, well, I'm happy to go ahead, got to go along with um, the kiosk proposal and um, do wood chips a little later in the summer. Um, Rick and I were down there just the other day and actually uh, it's a, the wood chip area is high enough over the wetlands so that he thought it would be perfectly fine. But if you'd rather wait, that's that's perfectly good. <clears throat> you know, I, I have a concern about the fact that we, we just keep spreading these layers and layers of wood chips that are not, you know, they succeed in suppressing for a little while, but they don't permanently suppress the invasives. And I've suggested this before, and I, I guess I'm just gonna suggest again that I really think the best thing to do is to start looking at ways to actually plant native plants that can, you know, outcompete the invasives and get some advice from somebody like Ted Elliman about how we do that. Because I just don't, we're just getting really thick layers of wood chips in various places there. And it, it's not, that's not habitat, you know, like just layers of wood chips is not habitat. So I really, I think that's a, I just in general think that's a decision we can revisit. I'm I'm fine with spending that money now on the um, McGregor um, kiosk. I think that's a great idea. Do other people have an opinion? I mean, if we've been wanting to do the kiosk for a while, I'm, I'm happy to support that. Well, it's only since last fall, but. Well, I mean. It seems like the time to do it if we have the money. Plus, I think it's a nice follow up to the fact that we did that letter in the fall. It'll be a nice way to remind people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. Okay. All right. So, does, does that mean we're going to do that? Sure, sounds like it. <laughs> okay. Hey. Is that we so we can do that, Kelly? Sure. Okay. I, I do have another budget matter. Um, last fall, Ed did not mow High East at Barber. And I'm wondering if we paid him to do so. And if so, do can we subtract that from his fee this spring? We did not pay him to do it. Um, the year before, <clears throat> um, what's his name, Mayo, <clears throat> the younger Mayo who was mowing the fields did high east at the same time. And he said he was going to do it. Um, <clears throat> the, it wouldn't have changed the price. He did not do it. it. Ed was not supposed to do high east. He would be stepping in now to do it for $200 extra, which is in, in the budget that I gave you. Okay. Um, shoot, I had one other question. Ugh. <laughs> Should have wrote it down. Written it down. Uh, okay, go move on. Let's move on. What do Sorry. people think about uh, my consulting with Steve Petty and George oh. Fisk about the barn? Well, is it your hope that? Um, what types of projects do you foresee and where's the funding coming from for that? Oh, I have no idea. I'm not looking for anything actually to get done right now. This is, this is outside of any immediate budget issue. This is the fact that um, <clears throat> we've got this wonderfully renovated structure, which is historic, and we have absolutely no long-term maintenance plan for it. And I want to see what they project, maybe an annual inspection. Um, I have no idea. I don't know about these things, but they do. That would, be, um, that would be useful too, because 
depending on what they project, um, perhaps it's something we need to consider putting into our request for the next, next fiscal year. Yes. Okay, well, I think that's a good idea. I agree. Yes. Anybody else? <clears throat> Courtney, I like that. Uh, does anybody else want to um, join in this discussion like Carol? I will if you would like company, I'd be happy to. It's not, it's not company, it's that you've had a such a deep historical interest in this from the beginning. Yeah, and I, I think they did a you know the, such a good renovation, and I don't remember anything else that needed to be done. But it's it's a building; it probably needs to be repainted. We should probably have the roof checked, and I can, I think at one point there was an issue with the foundation, but I can't remember what, if that was ever fixed. Where there was that bulge in the stone foundation, that would be a part of the review right now. I think you know it's it seems like it's been stable for. 100 years, but I, <laughs> you never know. That's the whole point of looking at it. OK, do, do I take it that this is a consensus? I yeah. think so. Yes. Neil, I'm done. <laughs> wow. OK. Great. Thank you. Kelly, uh, when I remember my other question, I'll email it to you. <laughs> OK, fair enough. <laughs> so do we have, uh, if I'm reading the agenda right, so then we would have taken a half hour for this, but now we've taken 15 minutes or really 10. So we can, we can do the artificial turf until we have sort of done talking about it and then move some discussion stuff up in front of the um, first hearing. Yes, but I, I would advise that uh, given the length of our agenda that we start the artificial turf now, but stop after 30 minutes because that will give us another chunk of time to do some other things. Right, I was thinking about that informally, but formally that's fine with me as well. Okay. Well, I think Michael <laughs> wanted to be here for the artificial turf. Did everybody see his email today? I am here. Oh, there you are. Well, we just had to check that you were With that voice talking. <laughs> I'll, I'll, if I get <laughs> lost in the other meeting, it's uh, I'll, I'll mute myself. If I'm not okay. muted, then I'm here. Um, Okay, so what's happening? Uh, well, the main issue is whether we want to, uh, I could put it on the screen if we want, uh, or that essentially it's the purpose of this discussion was whether we were uh, agreeing with what we said before, whether we wanted to make any changes. I made a few edits based on the fact that it's for a different context. I can put it, I'll share the screen. Yeah. Can you please put it up? Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, let's see. Does this work? You see one page there with some track edits? Yes. Okay. Um, essentially, I, we're trying to see whether we would move that, whether we need to vote again or and reconfirm that at the time we voted to vote no action on the uh, warrant article. Uh, based on the, the, the drop box of stuff that we had before that I guess we forgot that we didn't put up again on this. Hey, Michael, uh, I had a couple of changes for you. Uh, they were very slight in the um, third paragraph up from the bottom. It should well, be nearby towns that, have decided before, rather hold than on, Hold on, hold on. Before you get there, I just wanted to finish what I was Sorry. saying of whether we're going to take the same vote basically now before we we can clean up the letter uh, first or we could vote first it's just a matter of how you want to handle the fact that whether we are in the last line of this draft whether we're all in line with uh that we're asking to vote against i think that's the terminology when you're at the uh, town meeting what let, <coughs> warrant article right well a, would we how would we present this to town meeting? Would this be something that was read? Would it be just sort of, uh, we would state some kind of synopsis as part of the somebody representing the commission and the commission's position? What are, what are people we thinking about We do the same that? thing we did for advisory where basically we voted on it and Carol uh, just simply read it at the meeting. And it takes only a minute or so, I think, so it fits within the regular Comment Two period. minute comment period, yep. And so, and Carol, if I recall correctly, uh, not that she wants to be the one, but she was willing to read it again, um, if, assuming she agrees with what we have here. 
That's just um, a description of how I. <laughs> yes. I'd be perfectly happy, Neil, if you wanted to do it as chair. I have no urge in that direction. Okay. So if, if, if you wanted, if you're willing to do it, I'm happy to have you do it. Okay. I don't think that's her position. Her position is she would like somebody else to do it. But, no, but, I, but I, you'll know my language was if you were willing to do it, not if you want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's see whether we agree with this thing first, and then we can sure. figure out how it's going well, to be done. Uh, let, before we do that, though, let's just ask the question from the other direction, which is, do people, have people changed their minds significantly from when this was written? No. No. Me neither. No. Anybody? Yet. No. <laughs> My Russian wife would appreciate that. Now, uh, so, okay, well, in that case, why don't we dig into the edits a little bit and then, you know, see if there's anything else we need to tweak. Um, I'm happy with the edits. Can I? Hey, Michael, the only thing I, I found was the has to have. Yeah, no, I realize that I'm, normally I don't do it from Dropbox file. Let me, I have to open it up. Let me open it up on my computer here so I actually have a, a file that I can edit. Um, and uh, let's see. Give me one second. Come on. Okay, so what was the, uh, what were your comments? Third, third paragraph up from the bottom. Yes. Because of the risk, a number of other nearby towns have rather than has. A number. Uh, is a number singular? It is, but as somebody who started her career as a copy editor, I think. You know that. Yeah, go on. So what should we do? Well, no, I think Cindy's right because. Fine. It's Absolutely. the whole concept is plural. I think it, it works fine to say have. Okay. And then, uh, yep. Tell me when you're ready for the next one. I'm ready. Okay. Uh, and then the, the second minute. paragraph up from the bottom, uh, right. the middle, the middle line. What extent will take out the B? Okay. I got that in a separate copy. You're not seeing the edits there, but I've got it in. Uh, okay. Otherwise, I was fine with the changes that you made and the way it reads. Um, I just had a question. Oh my God, I'm so brain dead. I was just looking at it. Um, in the two, three, four, fifth paragraph up from the bottom, kind of in the middle there, where it says PFAS is increasingly being flagged as a drinking water contaminant at very low levels. Um, do you want to say like even at very like I just want to make sure it's clear to people that it's dangerous at low levels? Do we I put in the word even at even at I like that okay because I, I think there it some people will take that to mean as it's just around in low levels, it's just know. a dang, it's just a low level danger, yeah, exactly. Right, well, no, it, it's much better clarification. Yeah. Even that is in there. Uh, also in that same paragraph, it says organic compounds and metal, but I think it's multiple metals, isn't it? Lead, yes, it is. uh, zinc, and some other ones. So that exact same paragraph, but where it says metal, put an F. Before, I don't want to forget that Tom Trainer sent an email to some people about the procedure that they want to use. Um, so just before okay. we end this discussion, let me bring that up. But Michael, back to you. Any other uh, small and large changes? Well, um, so Carol's referring to Tom Trainer referring to pre-town meeting. Should the heading be Conservation Commission position for pre-town meeting? Or maybe pre-town meeting and town meeting, because I think I think, town, I think it covers pre-town meeting. I don't think there's we need to make the distinction personally. Okay. Um, but well, I, I think I think it's good that we stated it so we understand. Yeah. Thank you, Jane.
I mean, I can put it in people want. I feel like it's sort of. I think it's fine the way it is. <clears throat> what um, else? I think we should vote to go with it. Does um, anybody else, uh, Sue, or I see Pat LeBlanc is on, do you have any comments about the letter or anything that we wanted before we vote? Okay. <clears throat> One thing I do want to ask about, uh, is it the right wording in the last sentence? Basically, we're voting because it was a positive. I guess we're voting whether to be clearer in case they change the article. Michael, I think it's usually you vote yes or no, right? It's I or no. So I think it's a little clearer to say vote no on this Warren article. Uh, okay. Um, okay, so we're going to say, I guess I should probably change. So people would probably feel better if they saw what it is. Um, Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing just so that I just see what I do here. I'm gonna stop share. Okay. Uh, we'll just start share again with the right. Um, where is it there? Okay. Okay, uh, so we're gonna say recommends voting. No. Voting no on this project and warrant article just on this warrant article, because it's for town meeting. <clears throat> Neil, may I make a comment? Please. Yes, yeah, Susan Tyler. Um, as far as whether you want to write no or yes on that very last thing, my suggestion is this, this is going to be contentious at town meeting. And if somebody makes an amendment, or depending on how advisory comes out with their statement, it mm. may be of those reverse negatives where you might wrote yay to the nay so i think you just should be make it very clear you vote not for this project the installation of vote against how about, how about vote against the installation against this project yeah right, against the installation of artificial turf yeah okay thank you for and that i like that, that. I like how it ends up at town meeting with the nays or the yays or, or amendments and, and such. You're clear right. on your Thank that's you. That's a good that's a good Thank point. You. Thank you, Sue. Although to their credit, <laughs> uh, they do a very good job of explaining that as the whole thing evolves. But but yeah, Susan, you're right. Good change. Okay. Any other comments? That's a uh, uh, Laurel Farm. Mm -hmm. Not that we want it anywhere else. Uh, <laughs> okay. So I does think that that's... last sentence look good to everybody? Yes. All right, any other comments? All right, I move we accept this letter as representing the commission's position to be presented at pre-town and town meeting. Second. All right, any other discussion? All right, all those in favor, Gene? Aye. Neil, aye. Michael? Aye. Courtney? Aye. Carol? Aye. Cindy? Aye. Okay, I think that's everybody we have. All right, the motion passes. Carol, do you want to talk about the notification thing that Tom Trainer brought up? Yes, and let's see, Jean, I know you and Cindy, Michael, and I think Elizabeth got it. Um, he sent a letter saying he received a form from the town moderator regarding presenting. And also he asked if CONCOM could take the lead on an opposition statement about this. In other words, I think he's asking us to go first in order. Um, well, I think he's asking us to check off that we are going to present an opposing opinion. That's how I read it too. I read it the way Jean read it. I see. Well, so why don't I share if I can? Try to share. Well, the question is, in the end, we can present this no matter what, and we can simply we're going to send it into the select board, and we're going to send this. I would suggest that we email this to the select board and to advisory, and to the town moderator, and we could say that we will be presenting this at the meeting. But we don't need to. We don't need the formal thing because 
it's less than uh, two minutes. Um, but okay, if I mean, it depends how if you want to formally, since that, Carol, if you're taking it on, I would go with whatever you want to do, but. No, no, I'm just saying there's this form that he sent us and we just have to check some things off. You know, we have to tell them, um, I guess if I'm going to do it, I have to say that I'm representing and I'm representing the commission and then it asks what the presentation is and I'll be, there's, you know, speaking from the microphone in front of the garage, at the front of the garage. So I'm not going to be, you know, having slides. That's, that's basically it that those need to be filled in. And okay, I can- Carol. You're gonna take care of it? Yeah, I can take care of that. I just wanted to make sure people were aware of that. Yeah, and can you notify Tom too? Yes. Thank you. Are we doing anything for all town meeting, uh, pre-town meeting? I thought that's what this was. I, I did too, I thought it was for I both. I just wanna know, whether, well, there's two different things. This is for both. It can be for both, but Carol's just committed in filling out a form for town meeting. Yeah. Are you going to do it at pre-town meeting on Monday? Let me see whether this is just for town meeting. Um, yeah, it is just a town meeting. I, yeah, I mean, I, I think that a lot of people will be at pre-town meeting and that it, I thought the intention was for people to, that that's where they're gonna do more of the arguments, right? It was supposed right. to be coming down. So yes, that I was- That was the intention, but I, I'm sure it's just gonna mean now that Everybody's going to say the same things twice. Yeah. Right. I, I agree. I, we know the town. Like it doesn't work the way they want it to work. Yeah. Okay. So I guess that means I should also let them know that I'll be speaking at pre-town meeting on. Oh, thank you, Carol. Statement. Yes, thank you, Carol. Our, our PR person. <laughs> By the time I get to town meeting, it'll, it'll be like memorized or something third time awesome okay um anything else on this great um okay why don't we jump then to what let's go down through discussions um because i think you know we've got to wait till eight o'clock for the rda and so we've got a half hour now or most most of it um should we just run down through what we've got here do we have minutes we can look at we have four sets of minutes. Wait, back. <laughs> I didn't have right. a chance to see if I've even looked at any of them, but yeah. I, I have not, not looked at any of them. <laughs> I could put them off because we have a lot of things to do, but I know I, they're building up. This is no insult intended to Elizabeth. <laughs> yes. So, uh, well, how old is the oldest set? 318. No, March 3rd, even before that. Is there another one before that? There's March right, 4th. March 4th. Which I, I like oh. to read them separately, so I would prefer to just put it off. All right, look, we have recordings of these meetings, so it's not like anything's going to be lost. So if, if not, I'd say maybe we should take a quick glance through them, but I think it's fine. Does anybody have some strong urge to do them tonight? No, I think we can just like make a commitment to do some of the older ones. Bob, we'll come. Come on. How about if you read them yourself, send me your comments and I'll incorporate them all in for next time. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I like that idea. All right. Um, oh God. Should we talk should we talk about Soulbrook and the unauthorized bike trails? Uh, that's kind of a tough one, but um, well, okay, let's do this. What in the discussions can we just knock off right now? We've got Sewellbrook, we've got 2020 inventories, we've got new residence letter, we've got tree cutting, we've got et cetera, et cetera. Everybody can read. AAs, something fast. How about the Boy Scouts? Hold on, how much time do we Boy have? Boy Scouts? Yeah. We have, a half, we, have? We, have, we have 26 minutes. Of all the issues that we have to handle, I would suggest that we have to deal with the uh, the 40 Bs. If we wanted to go through things that we have to deal with tonight, mm -hmm. versus could get pushed off if we run out of time, that the 40 Bs I think needs to get some attention, and I would suggest going to those two. Can we have okay. an update on hold on uh, hunting in North Maine? 
Um, I could make quick work of the, un the inventories and the tree cutting. And then we've also got the, what Elizabeth just raised, which is the camping. Right. The Boy Scouts. Why don't we do the Boy Scouts first and then let's just run through the list and get as far as we can. Elizabeth? The Boy Scouts, the form is in the Dropbox. They want to camp at Peters Hill Saturday night, 15 to 20 of them. Whoa. That's the party area, right? <laughs> With a campfire. So I will tell them there's no campfire allowed. They were going to ask the fire department, they said. They were going to ask the fire department, but we don't allow campfires, correct? Yeah. I, I don't know. think, I think it's know? okay if they have the fire department's approval. Okay. Yeah, especially if it's like an open area. I mean, it's not, you know. I think there is almost like a fire pit up there, but there's one thing. I don't know if anybody's been up there lately, but the last time I was up there, there was an entire table that had broken in half, like one of those ones that with, that's about that you have in an office. So Bill and I took kind of the part of it down, but the re has anybody else been up there? Because the rest of it's probably still there. <laughs> Why don't we tell the Boy Scouts they can have their fire in exchange for cleaning up the site? I think or, or burning the, the burning the table on the campfire. I think if it's wood. But, uh... I I, th I seriously think it would be great to say to them, hey, you know, if you guys are going up there, could you take this on as a project? Because you need to have multiple people carry it if it's still up there. That's why Bill and I didn't carry it down. Yeah, are there still beer cans and stuff? I didn't see that. It was, but it was weird. At some point, somebody must have had a party, and then they broke the table. How long? How long ago did you go up there, Carol? I mean, that was easily a month or two ago. It was. It might have been in the in winter even. I remember some of the pictures when we were originally looking at some of the what had happened up there, and I remember a table in the picture. So, well, look, I I will say this, and we can certainly discuss it, but I. I'm not inclined to necessarily have them do too much work. Like if they're going up there for some Boy Scout purpose, let's, you know, I mean, we can certainly suggest and ask them if they'd be willing to help out with that, but um, I don't know. I was thinking more asking them because among other things, it's not very, I mean, that's not a very nice campsite when there's like giant junk there. Yeah, we can definitely ask them. We can just Elizabeth. very nicely ask if they could, they could take a look around and leave it better than when they found it. Right. There you go. You could always say, and then the, the this big scary monster won't come in the middle of the night if you take the table. <laughs> the Chuck Peters Hill Yeti. <laughs> the only thing I would well, you haven't heard of that. <laughs> moving on, I would say that uh, that we should condition on them either talking to the Board of Health about what the state regulations are at this point for such gatherings. Huh? What do you mean? Oh. He means regarding COVID. Yeah, regarding COVID, gatherings of this scale are not necessarily, I don't know what the rules are. They're constantly changing. I don't know that we need to get involved in that. Well, I think <laughs> that's, a, that's for them to deal with and decide. I mean, we're well, conservation. I think, that is a condition. I think it's our responsibility that if we're going to let people use our property formally, that they follow the state regulations on for related to COVID and gatherings. Well, I think we can tell them that they ought to do that, and I, but I don't think we should let it go any further than that. Elizabeth, that's they want to do this on Saturday, Saturday, right? They were supposed to be camping at Audubon, but for some reason they got displaced. Because well, like they weren't following know. COVID regulations. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> so um, here's what I suggest that um, I'm going to uh, look up our rules for conservation land to confirm that fires are okay as long as the fire department has heard about it. I would like for them to, uh, you know, prove to us that they have contacted the fire department. I also ask you to please, Elizabeth, send them uh, the rules along with whatever email you send to, to them. Okay. Can I make one other move that? The fire? is that for most of this spring, we've been in drought conditions and for a while they were having fire alerts. So your mentioning of that just reminded me that, that, that if, it, if we still are having those conditions, then we should tell them they can't do a fire. Yes, but that's what the fire department is going to evaluate. Right, they should get a evaluate that. I think we should give them, they should give permission for the fire department and that they need to follow the state rules on gatherings. I, I think that's sufficient. 
Yeah, can I can I move that? <laughs> Please. Can I make a comment? Sure, Sue. Yeah, I know in the past that the uh, Boy Scouts and, and all have certainly had permission to uh, camp and do a similar thing down at the Barber Reservation, and they've always been allowed to have a campfire down at the Barber. Okay. All right, so they, they've allowed fires on conservation land with the approval of the fire department. Right. Right. Okay. Well, we'll double check all that stuff. Um, Courtney made a motion that we allow this given that they show proof of the fire department and that we uh, make sure they file, follow state regulations on COVID. Um, so I second that. Any discussion? Uh, all those in favor, Gene? Aye. Neil? Aye. Michael? Aye. Cindy? Aye. Carol? Carol? Oh, sorry, I said aye. Wait a minute, am oh. I muted? No. No, you're not. Uh, Courtney, I just didn't hear you. Aye. All right, the motion passes. Thank you. What's next? Um, inventories, please. Go for it. It's not really portrayed accurately on the agenda. My biggest question is regarding um, our inventory specialists being able to use wildlife cameras. Uh, they, and this is kind of a, we need to decide soon because they're gonna start um, doing the, their work very soon. So uh, they really would like to set up wildlife cameras at the two parcels. And um, I remember that when somebody brought up wildlife cameras before, a couple months ago, people had lots of concerns about, particularly about privacy so um, I think this email back from Lori is in the Dropbox, but she, she explained uh, why she thinks, you know, we wouldn't have, have to have any concerns about them. Did everybody or anybody get a chance to look at the email? Yeah, I'm reading it. So, I did. so they're not gonna be aimed at, the, at any public trail. They're gonna be, you know, in the woods, um, away from where people would pass. And they're not gonna be aimed at any private residents as well. Um, the commission would be in charge of what to do with the videos. So if we wanted them to just use them in their reports and nothing else, that would be up to us. Um, if any wildlife camera is lost or damaged, we, the commission, are not responsible for that. And um, da -da -da -da. I think that's it. But so I would recommend that we allow them to use wildlife cameras. What do other people think? I'm fine with it. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I mean, I think it's, you know, it's for research and, and the rest of it. And it's, you know, I think it's fine. So if you haven't had a chance to look, you, you should because Lori sent three pictures that she captured at other locations with wildlife cameras and you have to look closely at them, but they're pretty amazing. Like in one picture, there's actually a bobcat scaling a log. In another picture, there's a, a beaver sliding into a, a pond, which is very cool. Anyway. Awesome. Okay, great. What else? Let's see, uh, tree cutting. I, I, tr I tried to draft a message. I'm, I want the, the members to um, tell me if they feel like putting a message up on the town website um, now or soon is a good idea. I'm bringing this up because um, we've been getting notification. Elizabeth has been getting notification and I've been hearing people cutting trees in areas where they, I know there are wetlands for a few weeks and it's, it's kind of overwhelming. Um, so I was thinking if we put up something on the town website that was not, you know, a punitive or anything, but just like, um, Hey, it's spring. You know, we know you're 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 spending more time outside. You want to improve your property. Uh, are you aware that uh, the commission would like to know if you're doing any vegetation modification in or near wetlands? Something like that. If people are okay with that, then I will um, at some point draft something, and maybe uh, one or two of you can evaluate it and tell me what you think of it. I have a question, Jean. You're just looking to put that on our town on our on our town website. Yes. Yeah. It, this kind of ties into something I was going to talk about with the new residence letter, and we can wait for the new residence letter, and I'll bring it up. But I mean, I just don't know how many people are going in and checking the website to get that information. 
And I was going to suggest a townwide mailing. Um, townwide mailings are massively expensive. Well, I'll fund it. Uh, we have we have a, a pamphlet right on our on our own in our own conservation department uh, website, if you want to call it, the town website, but under the conservation department, looks like it's been mailed out before. It's perfect. I mean, why even bother reworking the wheel? I would just say, send that to everyone. Um, well, well I, I can't, I confess, I don't know what it looks like. But... I can, um, Michael, if I send it to you, can you bring it up? Sure. I'm on the other call. No, I'm here. You oh. can... if, well. I, if, if I quickly send it to you, can you, um, can you share it? Sure. Thanks. Yeah, my computer was quick. Hmm. Anybody so, can share a screen though too. But... Yeah, Cindy can share a screen. Well, the only thing is, is it, this is okay. I don't, but I don't want to sort of just burn too much time why don't, we, why don't we just get it to to Jean? Jean, you can see what you like well, you like about it, and then send something out to all of us. Yeah, and let, well, let me ask this question: Are people comfortable with doing a townwide mailing? If Cindy would pay, you know, donate the money to the commission for it, would people rather go the approach of putting something on the town website? What are what are the thoughts there? I guess I'm the question I am having. There's two different things that we've talked about. One is a letter to new homeowners, which I actually think is a fantastic idea because there's so many properties that have wetlands on them just because the development patterns here that I think that would be super helpful. Um, but Cindy, I wanted to understand, are you suggesting instead something more like a postcard specifically about this issue of taking down trees or or maintaining vegetation within the wetland? Yeah, I'll, I'm sending it to Michael now. Michael, it's going to your Comcast. Okay. Um, this is a, it looks like a eight and a half by, I gotta get back on Zoom here. All right. This looks like, it, it, what it looks like to me is it looks like an eight and a half by 11 printed both sides and tri-folded. Um, and it just, it's like what you can and cannot do in and around wetlands. It, to me, it looks like this was sent out at some point by conservation townwide. And it's, and it's on our website now. Okay, uh, this was written when I was the agent and it's very outdated, so. It, I, I don't think it's outdated, it looks great. I read it, it still all pertains. Are you guys seeing it? Yep. Yes. Okay. I mean, if oh. we send out a townwide thing, then it would be trees plus. I mean, it's an opportunity to send out a lot of a bunch of things. But right, it opens. Oh, 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 but oh, tree on. removal is right there. Okay. The right. Bullet point. So. Right. Hold on. Can I just say something? Because I think that there are two different purposes here. One is to address tree removal. The other is getting information about wetlands and conservation commission work in town. Because to me, something like this seems more related to the new resident letter than it does to tree removal. Because I think if you're trying to address tree removal specifically, first of all, it's going to get lost in here. Um, and, and second, I don't know, there's a part of me that always worries about being overly communicative, you know, but it's just my thoughts. What do other people think? I think um, getting back to the first thing you said, Cindy, about the town website, I had it in mind that it would be a pretty short message, that it would be at least for a small period of time, be right on the home page for, I don't know, a week or two weeks at best. But I, I happen to think a lot of people do go to the Sherburn homepage. So that's what I was thinking. I mean, I, I don't say, I mean, I'm not saying don't do it. I was just thinking, don't just rely on that, right? Like, I think you should do it. I, I would reach out to people in many ways, right? I mean, I think it's great to post something on the home web, on the homepage, that's great. 
I just don't know that you're, you know, like, I don't know if that's just the only way to reach people. That's all. Oh, I, I, I agree. And uh, so I guess when we get to the item on the agenda of the new residence letter, we can explore, you know, this brochure. And do we want to send it town wide or do we want to send it just to new residents? But right now I'm talking about tree cutting that's happening right now. And, you know, the tree cutting, I think the probably one of the big issues is that a lot of the trees that got really hammered during the gypsy moth thing are have been standing dead trees for a while and then they're starting to the limbs are dropping and people are starting to say I have to get this out of here so right. I think I agree with you Jean you know there's going to be a lot of that this spring I think it is good to be explicit actually about the fact that it directs, we understand that a lot of people in town have standing dead trees and but that they are concerned about and want to remove. But we want people to understand that if it's within the wetland buffer, then they need to come to Conservation Commission about it. Um, yeah, I yeah, go on. I think that I I like I like the idea putting it on the town's website and I, I agree with Jean like more of a like hey it's that time of year you know before you cut you know you might not be aware that that kind of messaging but I I do think we might need to spread that wider than just the town website if we want to actually like catch the people that are not in the know um because the there are probably people that are not in touch with, you know, the operation of the town. Um, and those may even be the people that are just kind of doing their own thing on their property. Right. Um, so I, I agree with Cindy, we need to spread it more widely through other, whatever the kids are using these days. Um, and then, you know, I think we should talk about you know, maybe an updated version of that pamphlet or something that we could mail out more widely. And I mean, if Cindy wants to look into like what it would cost to actually do a town-wide mailing, you know, we could at least compare the option of like a new resident thing versus sending something out to everybody um, just to see what the, the choices are. Right. And I think we could put something on like next door as a great place to put this kind of stuff about the trees because a lot of people read it, <clears throat> will see it. So, and then, yeah, an updated pamphlet. I think from what I recall, um, it's four or $500 to send a town-wide mailing, something like that. I think that's right. So. Um, okay. So I will, who would like to look at what I draft to, to tell me what I need to do to go ahead with it, giving it to the town? Carol, okay. I can Anybody look else? at it too. I'll look at it. Okay. And then whatever you end up being ready to post on the website, send it to me and I can put it up on the on next door. Okay. A... Okay, I'm okay. done with that. Great. We've got seven minutes. <laughs> what do we think? Uh, is this are we going to talk about new resident letter tonight? Or are we going to pass on? I mean, I started working on it, and um, I'm really not much of a wordsmither. Um, I know you didn't particularly like the one that that we looked at the last time. Um, and then I started poking around because I remembered that flyer pamphlet thing that I had seen when I was poking around the website years ago. Um, I thought it was actually a hard copy, so, so I asked Elizabeth to check the files. I didn't, I didn't remember that it was actually on the website, but then I, uh, then I found it there, and um, and I read it, and I said, you know, this is kind of what we need, and the people that I see, like Jean's hearing tree cutting, I'm hearing tree cutting too, but when I am around town, just bopping around town, and I happen to observe things, um, they're not necessarily all new people doing this. But they're not long time people in town either. They're people that have moved in in the last, say, four years. So then I was thinking, well, how do you send somebody like that 
a new resident letter saying, hey, welcome to town, because they're not really for, you know, for you. I mean, they didn't just move in they're They've been here three, four, sometimes five years. So that's what then got me thinking about the pamphlet and maybe just doing a town wide mailing instead of, you know, I mean, still work on a new resident letter for those, you know, folks that just moved to town and you can target that. But I think more pressing to me right now is doing a townwide mailing be because the activity that I see going on is not just new residents. It's, it's people that have, that are in the, that are in that block between three, four, five years. They've already been here three, four, five years. And, and it, kind of some of it is, um, you know, because of COVID and people are home more and they're looking around, they're saying, oh yeah, I want to do this or I want to do that or I want to extend my lawn and I'm extending my lawn into the wetland now. And, um, you know, I think some of it is driven by COVID and people being home and working from home too. You know, where we may not have seen that. That's why we didn't see it until like now, even though they've been here, you know, a, a few years. So it just got me thinking that, yes, we still, I still think we need a new resident letter, but I would like to do something broader. That's just my thought. Well, okay, so people, um, I guess we need to give people an opportunity to look at the brochure carefully. I haven't looked at it in a while. I do have a feeling, I do remember feeling like it was out of date. So why don't we look at the brochure between now and the next meeting and Cindy, if you're sure you want to, maybe you want to explore the costs of a townwide mailing and we'll talk about it again at the next meeting. Sure. Maybe that's something we could do with the, the budget. Although I know that would mean we couldn't do the kiosk. No, I, 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 I'll make a donation. Thank you. The only thing I just want to just make a general comment, and I think getting information out about wetlands and, and you know, what you should and shouldn't do and, and that kind of stuff. I think that's good. I just want to make sure that when we're doing this kind of stuff that we balance not being overly intrusive with trying to get, you know, information out there as to how this stuff is supposed to go on. So I just think we'll need to try to strike that balance because I think if we're seen as monitoring people and their activities on their property where it's not like, you know, filling in a wetland and that kind of stuff. And I just, I think we ought to be cautious because we don't want to strike the wrong tone. And I think, for example, if in the, in the, the draft of the residence letter, the new residence letter that we, that we had, that was one of my concerns about it. It was overly sort of monitoring versus, or like, you know, like there was a slight bit of finger wagging and I don't want finger wagging. This should be a sort of a fun and, and an interesting bit of information that we share as a means to obviously, you know, curtail any activities we that are against the regulations, but at the same time, educate. If, if I could just say, I, I, in my opinion, and I view this probably very differently than you do, but I, I felt that the pamphlet that I came across on our website was not finger wagging. The I one that you, the one that you just shared, the one that Michael just shared, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I, I, thought I just, it was just I thought it was very well done, and, and we've already I mailed it. Uh, right, and I glanced at it when you just showed it on the screen, and that looked much more informative than it was, you know, sort of a uh, regulatory. So I'm in favor of that kind of thing. I just mean just generally with our approach to things as well. It's like you know, let's educate and and raise awareness. I think it's a great idea. I, I agree with that as well as just sort of like celebrating the wetlands a little bit. Exactly. Kind of thing there as well as some open space that we, if we want to throw that in, but maybe just that. Um. Okay, great. All right. Um, all right, so it's eight o'clock. So we might as well move on to our next uh, agenda item, which is the RDA for Mass Coastal Railroad and Vegetation Management. Um, let's see. Do we have somebody presenting this tonight or how is this working? Uh, I thought somebody named Tom was. Tom. There's a Tom Lewis on here. here. Yeah. 
that's that's Tom from the railroad. And then I think Joyce is also going to be here for that discussion. Oh, she's there. Great. Tom, are you going to start us off? Sure, I can give you uh, just some quick background. So Joyce and I did meet today and just talked about um, the whole regulatory process. Um, and just as some background for the commission. So railroads in the Commonwealth, they manage the vegetation under the rights of way regulations, uh, which is administered by the Department of Agricultural Resources. So as part of that regulation, they're required to have a vegetation management plan, which is the overall body of work and describes the work that they do. That's a five-year plan and their most recent one expired at the end of last year. So that is in the process of renewal. And as part of that, they also have to re renew the uh, boundary delineation of the resource areas of both wetland and water supply. So that part of the process, the RDA um, process goes to the local conservation commissions um, for the boundary delineation. So that's why I submitted my RDA application. Um, and hopefully maybe you've had a chance to look at the, the maps that we send out. Um, but basically the way the process works is we're allowed to apply herbicides on the right of way and within a buffer zone to a resource area, but no closer than 10 feet uh, with the assumption that we're using so-called sensitive area materials um, that are listed on the mass website for those products. Can I ask about the, uh, the five year thing that has to come about every five years? You said that yes. the last one has expired. So yep. do we have to wait until the new one has been approved? Um, no, we can do the work. I mean, the, your approval can happen concurrently with the review of the overall work plan. Um, the work plan is reviewed and approved by the Rights of Way Advisory Council. Uh, on that council includes a representative from DEP. So DEP does review the work plan. So they're part of that process. And that's one of the reasons why we use the RDA application versus a notice of intent for this type of work, because it's already been reviewed by the DEP. I'm just a little, okay. I. I'll take you at your word. It just seems a little odd to me that we, so my understanding is that there's the five-year plan and that the, the once every year plan falls under the five-year plan. So like right now we don't have a five-year plan. That, that's right. It's, it's like I said, it's in the process of renewal. Um, there's some final edits to be made, um, but it's already been through the advisory council. And you are right. The yearly operational plan um, is more detailed than the describe specific work, uh, the specific type of herbicide and concentrations and um, so on for that particular year. Whereas the five-year plan describes the overall body of work. Well, so I just have one comment about your, about your RDA. Um, you're asking for both a positive and a negative. And uh, we recently had a long debate about um, one determination of applicability, not being able to have both a positive and a negative yep. listed on it. So, um, but, but really what you're looking for is approval for the wetland delineation. Right. And that would be under, under negative, right? It would be a negative something. Yeah, there's been a considerable amount of debate, let's say on the subject. Um, and Matter of fact, I have a meeting tomorrow with a DEP and one of the local circuit riders, um, not in your region, but in another region to address your exact question because I get conflicting information even from within the DEP from different regions. I think, uh, I, I, think I misspoke. I, I meant to say to get approval for your wetland del <coughs> delineation, what you're really asking for is not negative, it's positive. But um, okay, so that's um, a question that's still in front of us. And I would suggest now, I did speak to Joyce briefly this afternoon. So if, if I may, I would suggest that uh, Joyce tell us uh, about her visit with you this afternoon. So we did speak, Tom and I spoke about 
procedurally going forward, and it's not so much that he has a wetland delineation out there, it's that there are markers on the tracks that define when the spray stops and when it starts. It's not like there are wetland flags out there. It's just his tracks are, are, are clearly marked as to where they stop with their resource uh, in a resource area or 10 feet from the resource area and goes and go forward. And those markers, because the tracks have been uh, repaired recently and changed, that those markers aren't yet out yet. And that's something that he's going to take do in the next couple of weeks, and then we will review those those points where it stops and starts. So it's not really a delineation we're looking at; it's the uh, marks that uh, for their spring, uh, which you know, which, which is which makes sense. It's I, I don't know that I would call it a delineation though. Tom, I don't. What what do you? How do you? Yeah, the, the word gets thrown around, but you're right. It's very different than what you're used to seeing for any other type of uh, construction or development project. Um, as you say, th there's not flags hung um, uh, along a boundary. Um, we have permanent plate markings that we affix to the track. We, we physically nail metal plates into the ties and they have color codes that are consistent with the mapping. Um, and normally those plates would last 10, 15, sometimes longer years. Um, but because they recently did a whole bunch of uh, heavy tie work last summer and fall, and they also did a complete rail change out on this particular line, as you probably saw, um, we lost a lot of our markings that have been there for many years. So I have to go through and reestablish all those before, um, before we can do any work this year. So it seems to me that, um, okay, I can accept that what we're approving is not technically a delineation, but it's a this marking system that you have so that the sprayers know where to start and stop. Um, since the markers are, you know, some of them are in need of redoing, perhaps we need to wait until that happens and have Joyce go out again with you. Yeah, that's fine. Um... We often continue these hearings until we can get a good field review and, and a comfort level with that. So and I, uh, I know we certainly that, have time. Yeah, I know that the letter said that you're you're anticipating starting the spraying in June. Is there so is this possibly all going to happen before June? Yeah, I I have yeah I expect to be out there probably in the next two three weeks uh, before the end of May for sure to go through not just your town but all the all the towns. I heard that you do this in 75 different locations. <laughs> no, just 69. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm all the way from the Berkshires to Boston and down the Cape and up to New Hampshire. So uh, I cover the whole state. So yeah, I get around. So if we're, uh, just a question whenever we get to it, whether it's today or in the future, but if we are not really confirming a wetland delineation, then that wouldn't enter into the RDA, correct? That's what the RDA is asking. That's what I, is, is in the language, but, but it's, um, I mean, I think. I think what they're looking for is they're looking for a clear, that we have a clear understanding of what they're going to be spraying and how they're going to, how they start, start and stop and that we agree with it. Is that true, Tom? Yeah, that's that's a fair statement. And I, I actually told someone recently that a lot of these determinations are like snowflakes. It seems that no two that I get back are the same. And that's one of the reasons why I'm meeting with the DEP because I like to get a little more consistency in, in that because um, it's, it's not really that clear in the regulation as to what we're supposed to request as, as far as which boxes get checked. Um, uh, although I have been told by different um, regions of DEP different things. So one of them said that I should ask for what was in my letter, which is a negative three, a negative five, and a positive two A. And then I've had other regions of the DEP tell me, say, no, it's just supposed to be a two A. And then I've had others tell me it's just supposed to be a three. So it's not entirely clear. 
Um, but as, as Joyce said, I think the important thing is that we have an understanding of what's out there. We agree on it. Um, and as long as you wish to have determination based on that understanding, I think that's the most important part of it. Right, so maybe after you get uh, hopefully some more clarification from meeting with DEP, and yeah. if, we, if we go ahead and continue this, um, maybe the upshot will be that when we have our continued hearing, we can modify the language of the request of the RDA. Sure. Do you know when your next hearing is scheduled for? Um, well, May 20th, but maybe that's too soon. Um, two weeks in order, for, in order for you to visit the site again. Um, well, why don't we just continue it until then? And, and if I'm not able to get out there before then, I'll let you know. So just so I'm clear, you're not just actually going out there, but you're, but the hope is that before this all gets signed off on, the plaques are going to be replaced that are missing. Right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, if you if you don't mind me, uh, sorry, Michael, go ahead. You can go first. No, you, uh, I have a series of other less okay. questions. If you all right. So process. mine are still procedural. So if, uh, if you'll let me do it first, and then I'll let you go on that. So because in my mind, I'm still trying to figure out just, you know, and this is just a, I'm just not sure, you know, under normal RDA, we're sitting there and trying to figure out whether something has, you know, is going to have an impact on a resource area. And if it is, we make a positive determination. If it's not, we're going to have a negative one. But this seems to be, you know, sort of activity that's covered by something. And then there's the compounding problem of the fact that it's actually not in effect at the moment because it's being renewed. And so are we even able to make this determination under this uh, this sort of structure, this regulatory structure? You know, is that even sort of legally binding? So those are kinds of just my questions and I'm, I'm you know, that that's it. Well, I think Tom answered that. I think he believes it's okay that, that the five-year plan, that the five-year plan will be finalized very soon. So that this uh, once every year plan will be covered. I'm sure the five-year plan is not gonna be substantially different from any of them in the past. Right, and, and, and truthfully, I'm not particularly worried about it being <clears throat> different or anything else. It's more of just like a, can a commission make a determination about it um, when in technically it's not an effect, right? So is there like some legal thing if somebody wanted to make trouble about it? That's really mostly what my question is on that front. Um, maybe Tom, you can ask DEP that. <laughs> well, I'm not sure that DEP would actually have the authority over that. That would be the Department of Ag. But I can tell you just from um, experience, oftentimes the determinations are made months in advance of the plan finally being approved because really the two are, separate from each other, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the confirmation of the resource areas is what it is, independent of the work. Right. Um, the wetland boundaries aren't gonna change because the plan changes. Okay. So, so and I can tell you that it's often done um, many months in advance. Okay. So as long as we're not in a position to be sort of have any kind of legal exposure, I think it's fine. And then, then I guess the other thing is, is so are we, I guess, are we determining that the markers that you're putting are within 10 feet of a resource area or are we just confirming that, like that's the part, the other part of having difficulty just come kind of understanding is what are we exactly approving? I think it's the, the first thing that you said. It's not just resource areas, it's also uh, sensitive areas, which are such as private wells, or I can't remember what the other thing is. We're doing that? That's no, not... um, that's what Joyce would be doing with Tom. Okay. The, mark, the markers don't just mark resource areas, they mark sensitive areas as well. Well, some of those sensitive areas don't sound like they have anything to do with conservation commission jurisdiction if they're wells. That's correct. So, so what would we be confirming? It's not our jurisdiction. I suppose we'd only be confirming those things that fall under our jurisdiction. Okay. 
that that's another issue that I'm trying to get clear. <laughs> because All right. So because that, at, at first I started up. out I started out thinking I was just confused, but I think it's confusing. <laughs> yes, yeah. and, and it is. You're right. And and I've been dealing with this over 20 years, and I'm still having these questions that aren't entirely clear. Um, you know, there is nobody else that approves uh, the Zone Two resources of a of a wellhead recharge area. Right. So it's always been kind of just understood that um, the maps get approved by the commissions and hopefully they, the GIS got looked at and it's right. I can tell you that I've looked at the GIS and I've re-verified that nothing has changed. Okay. So. Michael, do you have your questions? Yeah, um, I guess I'll reorder it a little just to pick up with this last topic. Right, all these, one thing is hopefully you can send us a better copy of these maps. You know, you see in the, uh, um, is the one you have, was these it? These black, and white, gray things that are. Oh, yeah, if you want, actually. Um, whatever, you could. Don't, if don't you'll allow me to share my screen, I can bring them up in color. That's less. I guess, well. Uh, can, can you send them electronically in color? Sure, sure. Yeah. Let's do I, that. I apologize, I thought I did that, but maybe I did not. Right, they're very hard to interpret, zone A, zone okay. B. Yep. Uh, I mean, yeah, right. yeah. I, one I, of I my questions is, is, right, that issue, just picking up in reverse of what I had of, uh, right, that there's no body who's approving that you've gotten all of these, uh, the zone A and B and uh, zone, uh, correct, I guess, yeah. other than you, you're doing it, you're hopefully doing a job and that, but there's no formal over, there's no formal review of your work on that from let's say a board of health or something like that, or the, or what, or I guess DEP, do they formally review this DEP work? DEP right generally doesn't look at any of this unless there is an appeal or some other reason why they would get involved. It's normally just between the commission and then as long as the commissions approve the, the determination in, in their town, then the Department of Ag is responsible for administering and all the rest of the oversight of the work. Yeah, right. I mean, I, I'm sure it's a conflict, but I sit here and stare at my, uh, my house being in a DEP approved zone two WPA and I sit there and I go, okay, how, and there's a lot of area that's marked sure. along here and I'm seeing they're going, have they got it all? Are they overdoing it? Are they underdoing it? And how, and it would be nice if somebody, and if we want, I mean, right, I could see there's the, uh, uh, there's the priority habitat zone, which falls a little in our bailiwick that we can, but all that other stuff is, um, I have to admit, yeah, it would be nice if somebody was reviewing it since uh, I find it a little, uh, I guess. Okay, so there's a question of who's, who's really reviewing large areas here that would affect whether you do no spray or limited spray. Um, I guess what, when you have right of way, what's the difference to the right of way and the ballast? I'm gonna move on to some other. Um, well, the right of way just refers to the entire body of real estate on the track the width of that can vary considerably. Normally, the spray only takes place typically 10 feet either side of center line. That's what we usually consider the roadbed or the ballasted area. So that's normally what we spray. The only time we would spray wider than that is say at a road crossing, just for line of sight for the motoring public, just for safety reasons. Um, but normally we typically don't spray the entire width of the right of way. So the right of way is you're saying is 10, is, is it legally defined as 10 feet from the center of the track or not? How is it? No, no, the right of way is the entire width of their property and that can oh, vary wow. considerably. 40 feet, that's 40 feet, let's say in my case, it's 40 feet from the center of the tracks next to my house. Right, right, it can be. I mean, it was typically laid out in rods in the old days, um, but the right of way can be um, 66 or 99 feet wide. Oh yeah. Right. But you're, but in reality, we can't limit it, but 
in practice because it's because uh, it's a little concerning how much of uh, right how this is that's quite a large area that could be sprayed with I guess was a, a glyphosate essentially um, yeah I, I, like I said though they they rarely the only railroad that I work for that sprays the entire right of way from one property line to the other is Amtrak because they're running trains at 150 miles an hour and they want their property to look like an interstate highway. Um, they want to have full line of sight, and full width, because they need to be able to see anything that's out there. Um, all the other railroads like the Mass Coastal or the other ones that I, I work for, they typically just spray that 10 foot pattern either side of center line. That's the most common. It's nice to hear, even though we can't hold you to it, but uh... I mean, they, they can't spray wider in the sensitive areas. So in any of the, the blue areas or um, the well in protection areas, they can't spray wider anyway. They can only spray that minimum ballast area. Which is the 10 feet, is the 20 right. feet. I guess when I see a colored map, I can see what that is. But uh, yeah. the, uh, um, because right, I'm just curious when I look at the map, how certain things were, it's, it's unclear to me where what's driving. And if this comes out this delineation where in some areas I look along the railroad tracks, they have no spray on the west side only. And I'm trying yeah, to figure and, out like how can, how can one be splitting those hairs uh, that one side could be fine and the other side yeah. is, is, is a little... It's a good question. Yeah. I can tell you the reason for that. And it's, on, it's, it's specific to this line because this line used to be a double track. Right. There was an east track and a west track. Well, sometime in the past, they tore up the east track. So there's a pretty wide roadbed on the east side that's high and dry. Uh, but in these areas where you go through or adjacent to wetlands, the west side, the water can be very close, but the east side, it can be 20 plus feet away. Uh, just because of that, the, the width of the roadbed used to be double track. It's kind of unique to this particular line. Um, not all the rail lines are like that. Mm -hmm. So in the end, it is a little delineation because you're there, you're basically picking where there are wetlands and then you're not going within a certain distance of it. Um, so that's why I could see why it's an interesting issue in the permitting process because essentially whether we're approving your delineation without, we don't have the time and energy to go out unless you really with Joyce, we could check on it. But right, the whole idea that we're going to walk the entire track and confirm the delineation would make it hard to do a positive two way. To be honest, because that would mean that we're confirming the delineation the whole way. Sure. Uh, and that's a lot of work. Um, well, I can tell you that we have done that. Um, but normally in, in the past, in fact, I think I did this in Sherman five years ago um, with the agent that was there. Uh, but we were able to ride in a high rail truck and we traverse the whole thing from one end to the other and we stop and get out um, where, where we needed to. Mm. Uh, so we were able to do that in a matter of hours. Um, with COVID, it's a little bit of a different story, but it's more a matter of, you know, just making sure we're complying with work rules and everybody's comfortable and wearing masks if we're going to be in the truck together. Right. I guess we'll have to figure that out whether we're somebody's willing to do that. Uh, and, and I guess it is, and I guess the distances that are uh, put in your document here are just regulatorily based. I find it interesting that one can spray uh, within uh, uh, within 50 feet or what I can't, between 50 and 100 feet of any private well that uh, it's allowed to be sprayed. Um, yeah, no, I just find the distance is not very great. Uh, but I guess I assume they come from a regulatory. I guess they're in the right of ways regulations, not in our. It, yes, they are. They come directly out of that. And, and keep in mind, it, that's only only using those sensitive area materials, which are um, designed and have been reviewed and considered not to be mobile. Right. I mean, that's the problem, right? I, the, I've. It's a topic we've discussed many times in our commission about things like glyphosate and the different data about how much it's how much it can move and not move and whether it's something we should as places ban its use altogether. Sure. 
it's the extent that the regulations lag science. And so therefore, I, there's nothing I can do about it other than watch the fact that I, that my property, I bought her over a thousand, I bought a 1500 feet of, uh, of railroad tracks. And so I have an extra sensitivity to having sure. that having that sprayed here, even though it's in a limited spray area of a, a two year, two year uh, interval, which is better, which is better than a one year. Right. Um, but that's just my- um, There was one thing you did mention earlier that I just, I wanted to touch on. And you mentioned about the um, priority habitat of the NHS. They do also get a copy of every, every town's maps and they do their own independent review. That's nice to know. So just so you're aware, they're, they're reviewing everything for, for all their priority habitat. Mm -hmm. All right, um, Michael, do you yeah. have other things? Cause I I'll, also want to see I'll, if anybody I'll else. The I'll, I'll talk with Joyce or Tom at some other point just to see what it is since I can, it would be good to see the maps and I can see a large swath of what I'm quite familiar with. Um, okay. both sides just to see how it works. Great. Um, does anybody else have any questions or comments from the commission or really in the public as well? Okay. Um, all right, so we're gonna, I mean, this is in a hearing, so we don't have to continue it, but let's put it on the next agenda. Elizabeth, uh, do we have some room we can put this somewhere? Can I suggest uh, that we wait until the first June meeting? Um, Tom, if that doesn't mess with your timing, I, I think that's fine. Um, do you know what that date is? It would June be the 3rd. first Thursday in June. Okay. June 3rd. June 3rd. Do we need a signed letter from him for the extension? 21 day extension on uh, for an yes. extension on the RDA? Yes. It doesn't have to be, it's just an email is fine. An email, okay. Yes. That's fine. I can do that. All right. So June 3rd is okay with you? Yes. All right, uh, Elizabeth, do you want to give them a time slot? 8.15. Okay, all right. In that and case, it's on we my will... calendar. Fantastic, all right. Well, um, if unless anybody has other questions, I think we can, okay. we can continue this till next time. All right, and then once I do get my place um, reestablished, I'll reach out to you, Joyce, and we can set up a time to go for a ride. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I guess I'd be curious. Are you send, could you, do we have your contact info? And are you going to send us the new maps as soon as? Yes, uh, I, I, he sent them to me. I'll forward them to you. Okay, fine. And uh, whether you have your contact info, I would be curious to actually see when you do. Since I live where you have to put a whole bunch of plates, I'd maybe at some point be curious when you're actually down here. Uh, okay. But uh, but I'm not sure you'll you want to do that. But if you maybe do, maybe he'll <laughs> take you for a ride, Michael. I don't, yes. Maybe. Maybe. Because you know, you have to walk out a stream and uh, things like that. So I could see there'd be a number of plates to see how it goes. Uh, okay. It'd be interesting. All right. Sounds good. Okay. We'll see you in a few weeks. All right. Thank you, Tom. Thank have you. a good night. All right. Um, we do have three minutes before one Woodland Street. Do we have anything we can sneak in there? We could give an update on the new agent search. Do you want to do that? Go for it, Neil. <clears throat> okay. So at the moment, we are in a little bit of dialogue with David Williams about how to best go forward. We've I've done uh, some revisions to the ad to try to make it a little more appealing. Uh, my, my main goal being to kind of make it seem exci more exciting because I actually think it is exciting and to also just maybe take a little bit out of the like, you know, for 19 hours a week, you're going to be like, you know, doing like 50 hours worth. So I just wanted to take a little bit of the detail out of it. Um, David Williams has come back and suggested maybe we use a consultant that he knows to help with the job search process and potentially even onboarding after they that person is hired. He's also made some suggestion that possibly we would go over 19 hours and make it a benefited position, not necessarily full time. I've sent a response back asking some more questions and clarification and just waiting for a response. Obviously, time is of the essence for us because we do want to move forward with the search as soon as we can, but you know we have to go through the process we have to go through with the town. So um, that's where things stand at the moment. Does anybody have any questions about that? How are we dealing with this issue of whether we would go for more than our standard 19 hours? Is that? That's, that was one of the questions I sent back to him is this, yeah. you know, uh, I asked him what would the budget be for any kind of consultant? I asked him, 
you know, are you talking full time, part time? Are you talking over 20 hours? And don't we have to go to town meeting? And I asked a series of questions around those uh, those issues. All right, I'm just worried that we're going to get hung up on something since we're going to town budget town yeah. approval now, and it's yeah. right. And uh, how, I, how we'd ever move forward on that issue. Uh, well, I, yeah. I share, and so I share your concern, and which is why I, I feel like I we need a response. We need what he's thinking because it was just he sort of made several suggestions. I don't know if any of them have legs in terms of doing something in the short term. I did express the fact that, you know, every week that goes by where we don't have the key administrative role in our, you know, and as a regulatory body is another week that, you know, people have to fill in and carry extra burdens. So um, I tried to make more of that and I know he is already. So um, I will, I'm again, waiting for him to reply, but we'll sort of put as much pressure on the situation and try to get movement as quick as I can. Can we ask Elizabeth if you can, if she can check with accounting to see what our revenue has been in the last number of years to see whether that's part of. Sure, how many years do you want? Three, five? Well, the last three years are probably good enough. And this year date. For, for what purpose? For revenue to see whether we, uh, to see how much we are, can justify the kind of increasing the hours, not that we've ever managed it or should be fully covering our costs, but I think it could be. Well, part but I, that's what I want to, I want to understand from the town administrator what he's even talking about. Like, is he talking about that budget coming out of us? Is he talking about it somewhere else? Is it, does it have to get approval? What, cause like, I think if there's any sort of cumbersome process associated with it before an agent gets hired, I'm not in favor of it. So that, so, I mean, she, Elizabeth can certainly pull that data, but I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to get ahead of what, because we don't know what David is really thinking because he hasn't stated what he's thinking. So I just assume not make any assumptions about it. That's all. Oh yeah. No, the idea that he'd find some other money versus it's just a budget expansion for us is yes, would be surprising. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Um, it is now 831. So let's jump into the next thing. Um, we've got an RDA for one Woodland Street. There's a a fellow, a different person from GLM named Chris, who is representing this project. Wonderful. Yes, good evening. Hi, Chris. Good evening. My name is Chris Gavorio from GLM Engineering, and I am representing the uh, proposed septic system at One Woodland Street. Um, is it okay if I share my screen so I can show everybody the color prints? Please, Please. go ahead. Okay. Can everybody see that right now? Yep. Yes. Okay. So I'm just going to zoom in here on the locust so everyone gets an idea of where the site is. We are in, um, this is one Woodland Street, <laughs> right? It's called Old South Main. Um, and we are, this parcel here, it is a uh, two acre part, a little bit of a uh, dog leg to get into the property itself. So now I'm gonna, somehow here, here we go. Here we go, there's a site. Okay. So on the property, it um, has a failed septic system. Um, uh, they've had a failed Title V for it, and we are trying to we are proposing to put a new septic system in in its place. Uh, due to the well located the well in the front yard here, we have a neighbor's well over here, and another way, neighbor's well down to the to the other side of us here, and we have wetlands which run. Um, let's see, where are we here? Uh, the wetland line runs right along here along this darker, darker green area. So we did our soil testing in the backyard and we are putting the uh, leaching field into this area here, which is just outside the 100 foot buffer. Some of this trench, uh, our tank and our pump chamber does land within the 100 foot buffer, but this was the only location that we could fit it uh, so that it would be as far away from the wetlands and also be in correspondent to all of our wells. Uh, we are just a little bit shy down in this area here from this corner of the system to the wetlands, we have uh, 96 feet. 
Um, we have a proposed uh, silt fence, siltation barrier. It goes around the garden, out towards, uh, towards the wetland area, and then up towards the house. Uh, and this would also be our stockpile area of loam only. Any other material that would be taken out of the septic system would be hauled off site. This temporary stockpile of loam would be used to uh, cover the septic, the septic system after it has been installed. Uh, we tried to put it as close to the house as possible. And as you can see here, there's a dashed line. And just zoom in a little bit on that. Uh, there's a dashed line here, and this is the approximate location of the existing septic system. So you can see that we're keeping it quite a distance away from the, the new septic system is quite a distance away from the wetlands than what the existing system is. Uh, project access will be down the driveway and through the side yard here. Uh, this is currently all lawn area. There is one tree that will need to be removed, but that is outside of the 100 foot buffer. The rest of this area that's going to be disturbed is all existing lawn. And, and I believe that's it. If anybody has any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Seems pretty straightforward. Yeah, and, and I think in the letter, it does say that it meets all the criteria we have for, um, doing it under an RDA um, and that was outlined there which is our uh, 7331 so um, yeah I don't have any questions anybody okay um, I'm gonna have a trip sorry I'm sorry yeah go ahead please Cindy go ahead I was just curious about putting in a demarcation along the wood line Uh, the woods line is the demarcation already. That's an existing demarcation, and that will that, that will not be changing. Right. I'm just wondering if we can put up, um, you know, a few markers along there, in case the folks were to ever sell and anyone else were to move in and have a different idea about what they were going to do with that area. It'd be nice to let them know that, you know, they can't clear beyond or do any work. Actually, beyond the woods line, there is not much usable property. Um, from the woods line, actually down to the wetlands, it is a little bit of a slope. Um, so the woods line is basically as far back as anybody would really want to go. And the wetlands are, they are wet. Um, it, it's kind of like a swampy area that is standing water in a lot of spots. So, I mean, I think we. So do you, you know, think the homeowner if, would not be willing to put up any kind of demarcation? Um, I'm not so sure they'd be willing to, I'm not so sure it's necessary, but if the board does require that we can, we can put some uh, wetland bound wetland monuments on there. But I think the woods line is a natural barrier to believe that anybody would really would like to clear past that anyway. It's amazing what people want to do. So in these kinds of situations, it's, sorry, in these kinds of situations in the past where it's somebody's just doing a replacement septic that meets the 7331 regulations, have we been asking people to put in markers? Just, I don't know if anybody recalls on the commission. I guess it comes up when um, we have reason to believe that the system is getting replaced because the property is going to be sold, but we don't know that. One thing I, I don't believe the property is being sold at this point in time. Okay. I think they're just being proactive and they have a failed system, so they're replacing it. Sure. Carol, did you have a question? Yeah, I, I kind of, I have a concern about, I'd, I'd like to be able to establish some standard of where we ask people to put these wetland markers because I do understand that we're now putting it kind of at the edge of lawn. Um, I think it would be better if we came up with a standard that said, for instance, that we'll all consistently put it 50 feet from the wetland, even if that's lawn and it's something that's just flush with the lawn. Because um, otherwise, I think it's, it can be quite confusing and inconsistent. Um, 
So uh, I know we've talked about this with a lot of different properties and there've been times for sure where we've done it really to protect what was undisturbed buffer. Um, I guess I'm just suggesting that we as a commission might wanna have a conversation about, about that. Right, and I, I, I guess my perspective my perspective on it is kind of like if every time somebody comes before the commission, we make them put a marker in their lawn. Like I, they're just to me, they're like I'd like to have a criteria that we just generally use where there are certain situations that we think it's necessary, but there may be situations where we don't. And in my mind, this is one that falls into doesn't. But I, that's just one commissioner's perspective. I don't know what other people think about it. But I, I would agree that it would be good to have some consistency, whatever that consistency is. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. But I think we should have that discussion at a future meeting. Not, Agreed. Not yeah, during this. This is not, yeah. this is not like, the... It's a good point, for sure. But yep. I think we should just get back to the topic at hand. Okay. Well, do people I don't feel strongly markers? about putting up markers in this situation. What do other people think? Well, you already have my opinion. Yep. Carol, I guess, Michael. I guess I, to complete my thought, I think I'd rather put no marker actually, because I really do feel like I'd like to have, if we're gonna continue to do this, I'd like us as a commission to come up with a consistent standard. Okay. Uh, Jean, what you, you sort of rendered an opinion about if it was being sold, we've been doing it. Do you have an opinion about this situation? Um, I think it's, um, if it comes up as part of our discussion, <clears throat> That a property is that aiming for selling. If we if we are freely given that information, then I would be leaning towards putting up markers. But uh, Chris doesn't say there's any indication of that, so I I don't want to push it. I, okay. I don't want to push markers in the situation. Okay, uh, Michael, do you have a opinion or are you on the uh, ZBA meeting? He's on the ZBA. Meeting. Okay. Um, all right. It sounds to me like I think in this case, the, the, the majority of us don't feel that's necessary. Um, so I think, I guess what I would say is, so I would move that we, so, so what conditions do we have? We have erosion control. What else is in there? Because I don't, normally we have a little cheat sheet that somebody writes up and I don't have one. So um, he's already told us where the access is. So I would just say, and, and Chris, did you tell us uh, we're stockpiling? Yes. So I would just say uh, approve in accordance with the plan as presented. Okay. Um, I move that we approve this. So is it a negative two or three? Because I don't have the darn thing in front of me. Uh, neither do I. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Michael's usually the one that remembers it. I know, I can never remember it. <laughs> I need a script. Joyce's sheet is in the draft box. Tells you what to do. What does it say? In the Joyce's, in the agent report on the bottom, it'll tell you a suggested vote. Agent report at the bottom. I don't see the agent's report in there. Was it in there? Oh, you know what? This is Joyce's project, so she didn't do one. Oh, right, okay. right. I, right. I think the negative two, which negative says two? Okay. the work described in the request is within an area subject to protection, but will not remove, fill, dredge, or alter. So negative two. Okay. So I move that we approve this project on the RDA with the conditions laid out in the in the materials presented um, as a negative two. Second. Any other discussion? All right. All those in favor, Jean? Aye. Neil, aye. Courtney? Aye. Carol? Aye. Uh, Michael looks like he's out of commission, so to speak. Uh, Cindy? Aye. All right, I think that's everybody. Um, did I miss anybody? No. All right, uh, the motion passes, so that's it. Okay, okay, great. Thank you very much to the commission for your time and consideration on this project, and have Thanks. a good night. You too, thank, thank you. you, Chris. All right, um, we did it. Uh, 845, we've got an NOI. So just <clears throat> give me one second to get my language out and we'll, we'll jump right into it. This one is 13 Pleasant Street. All right. Um, <clears throat> the 
it's 8.44, I'm starting. All right, notice is hereby given that the Conservation Commission of the Town of Sherburne will hold a virtual public hearing at the Sherburne Town Hall, 19 Washington Street, Sherburne at 8.45 p.m. on the 6th day of May, 2021. The hearing will be held pursuant to Chapter 131, Section 40 of the General Bylaws as amended, the Wetland Protection Act, and the Sherburne Wetland Bylaw Chapter 17 to consider a proposal by Ecotech on behalf of Robin Resnick to remove a deck and replace it with a winterized addition at 13 Pleasant Street, Map 3 and Lot 3. Work is proposed within the buffer zone. This application is available for viewing at the Sherburne Conservation Office. Uh, all persons desiring to be heard will be given an opportunity to speak at this hearing. All right. So we've got folks that are representative of the uh, applicant. Art Allen from Ecotech is with you. Hi, Art. Thank you. How are you doing? Good. And I'm Ben Lapin from Salisbury Construction. I'm going to be the general contractor on the project. Okay. Okay. Um, I believe so that I see the applicants there too, just so you know, Robin Resnick. Yes, I see that. Okay. Great. Um, sorry, is somebody saying something? No. All right. Um, so I would just, uh, I guess, Art, do you want to sort of walk us through it? Sure. Do you mind if I share my screen? Not at all. So there is the site plan, slightly blown up uh, Pleasant Street on the left existing house uh, right in here, um, intermittent stream in the upper part of the site that flows down at the edge of an existing lawn area. So the buffer between the house and the intermittent stream where the wetland was delineated along the stream is, is an existing lawn area. Proposing a 20 by 20 addition to be uh, placed in the footprint of an existing deck. So the deck will be removed. Uh, the addition will be constructed. Um, there'll be temporary excavation um, and the grades, existing grades will be restored. So there's um, no proposed change in grades. It'll be a walkout. So the grade drops off now behind the house and, uh, and the addition will be a walkout basement at the at existing grade. Proposing an erosion control barrier from the corner of the house out around to the edge of the driveway. We've noted construction entrance will be at the driveway. So it'll be on the uh, construction entrance will be as far away from the wetland on the property as possible. Um, we, uh, we have, as you see, we have rare species in the, in the rear, basically to the rear of the house, the back of the house. And we've, uh, since we have our limit of work barrier uh, to give us enough room to get around the house, it, it encroaches into the rare species area. So as required, we provided the notice of intent to the Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program. Uh, they provided a letter uh, dated April 26, uh, stating that there would be no adverse impacts to the species associated with the project. So that's a that's a brief uh, introduction. And I, my understanding, the commission's been to the site. I was not at the site visit, but I'll uh, entertain any questions or comments. Thank you. Uh, did we get a copy of the letter from Natural Heritage? I believe we have it. Yeah, I saw it in the Dropbox. It's in, yeah, it's in the Dropbox. Okay. Um, Art, I, I think uh, Joyce sent you some comments. That... I have Joyce's comments, yes. Want me to go through them? That would be great, thank you. Could, you could say what they are because not everybody has them, I think. Sure. So she requested on the, so the first four comments pertain to the WPA form three, the notice of intent form. Um, she requested the applicant's phone number, which I, I can provide. Um, the owner's correct phone number, that was actually a typo on the form. So I'll correct that. And she requested the 
owner's email address and then the owner's signature and date of signature. I'll, I'll uh, provide that since I, I filed electronically, so I filed it you know, under my name, but I'll, uh, I'll also provide to the commission the owner's signature. Uh, the next comment, uh, she notes that the project's located within the no alteration zone. Uh, she requested an analysis as outlined in section 5.2 to demonstrate that this project will not adversely affect the interest protected by the bylaw and regulations. Um, I'll certainly address that. I, I felt that this was a pretty minimal impact project where it's basically just going in the footprint of an existing deck and the, the work area is an existing lawn, which will be returned to lawn, but I'll, I'll definitely go through, provide a narrative um, on, uh, on bylaw compliance. Uh, she requested the revised site plan to show the proposed access route. I, I, I thought our note was adequate, but I don't know if the commission wants something or Joyce was looking for something in addition to that, but. Um, I, she, I think that, um, you know, generally it's helpful to have everything both in the narrative and on the plan because I'm pretty sure that once the project is going forward, most people are going to be referring to the plan rather than carrying around the notice of intent. Yeah, and our order is going to reference the plan. So, and and that's why I had them put on the plan construction entrance that drive. Uh -huh. Yeah, so. I guess also she's asking for you to show where the stockpile area is on the plan. Oh, oh yeah, I hadn't gotten to that one yet. Right, but I'm just asking if my note about the driveway on the plan is adequate. The only reason I I mentioned that. Um, is because a lot of people talked about coming down beside the the opposite side of the house and just wanted to make it clear. That's all. Down where the gra down beside the house where the uh, um, on the near the stream side of the right project. So we just wanted to make sure it was very clear on the plan. That's all. So, but but that raises the question I see on the plan that it says construction entrance at driveway, but are you saying Joyce that there is other access to the where the construction is going to happen that'll be, you know, not there? Well, they could no. I mean, they could go down the driveway and then across the front yard and down the other side. I just wanted to all we wanted, all I wanted to do is just just show that it's coming down the driveway and around the back side of the house. That's all. Okay. And that nothing else came from the other side of the project. Understood. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that's clarified. Okay. You can come right down the lawn, right straight down there. It's a straight shot. You don't, you avoid the slope behind the house. And it, it might, someone might find it easier to go down the stream side. I just wanted to make sure it was clearly defined. That's all. Right. Yep. Right. I understood. Yeah, that's why, I, that's, that's why I made sure they put that note on the driveway, but I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll make it even more clear that there's no access. From Perhaps the um, also. Courtney, um, since you've been writing the OOC, maybe there, um, we can have a condition be that there be like a construction fence on the stream side. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. So ha have we finished going through the Joyce's uh, no, comments? No, a no, couple more. Um, so that revise the plan to show a stockpile area. We'll, we'll have that shown on the plan. Um, she notes the proposed addition will create impervious surface, revise the site plan to address treatment of stormwater from the surface of the addition roof. I know I had some subsequent discussion with the contractor about uh, gutters and a dry well, so we'll, we'll, uh, we'll clarify that on the plan. Um, she noted potential mitigation, uh, potential mitigation for work in the buffer in parentheses, plantings, wetland markers, et cetera. I guess I'd, I'd defer to the commission on that where this is this project is taking the place of an existing deck and within a lawn area. So I'm not quite sure what, um, what additional uh, mitigation is required. Um, Can I respond or do you want to finish? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll finish the last comment. So uh, revise the proposed erosion control barrier to, to 12 inch mulch sock 
we had proposed the toed in sill fence, but we can certainly revise that to a, a 12 inch uh, mulch stock. That's it, thank you. So um, regarding the mitigation, I think that has come up because uh, the, the deck is no longer going, you know, the deck is going to be up above the addition, but the addition has, will have a solid roof on it. So in our minds, it's switching from pervious surface to impervious. And so the mitigation question uh, for me addresses how much area uh, now in the 50 foot um, is going to be more increased impervious surface. And so I also know that the, um, the homeowners are interested in uh, planting to protect the stream um, because we talked about that during the site visit. And so right. I'm wondering if, if the homeowners can come up with a quote mitigation plan addressed by planting by the stream as a sort of buffer for the stream. And if you could, uh, if they come up with something and, and if you could approve it, Art, maybe that could become part of the plan. Oh, sure. I can recommend some native, uh, you know, plantings that are adapted to that area, certainly. And then the, um, there was some mention on here. Oh, yeah. The addition will create impervious surface, revise the site plan to address treatment of stormwater. What, what did you conclude from that? Um, I had some discussion with the contractor about roof gutters and, and some sort of uh, infiltration system. So, uh, so we'll, we'll flesh that out on the revised plan. And something that isn't on here, but um, I know some of us are wondering about after the site visit is the, uh, the drainage that's um, actually the lawn area between the house and the stream, which is pretty much uh, devoid of vegetation. And I know that's, this would be supplemental, but I wonder if that could be addressed or a solution could be provided there. Uh, sure, we can we can look at that. I, I know it's pretty shady over there. That may be part of the problem and maybe they just need a, a, a shade, a shade seed mix on that area to, cover it a little bit better, but yeah, we, we can talk about that. And then um, maybe somebody else on the commission can talk about this. There's, uh, I think there's drainage pointing right into the stream from the house. I don't know, it's not part of this project, but uh, we did see a pipe coming underground and then dumping right into the stream and there's some scouring at the end of the pipe. So, um, I don't know if there can be a solution for that. Is that like a basement pump? I don't know. I I defer to the applicant, Robin, if you, if you can answer that question. Hi, it, it's coming from the sump pump. Can I see? It? Hello. Yeah, yeah. I we heard that. Um, okay. Thank, thank you. you. So maybe we need some some sort of velocity dissipation or something at the end of the end of the pipe. Well, I, I just I'm asking you, Art, uh, about procedure. Like this is something that's been in existence. Uh, can we ask for something like that? That's really not part of this project. If it's causing damage in the resource or within your your setbacks, you certainly can. You certainly have the right to request it. I mean, you could, you could, if it wasn't, if there was no application, you could address it under enforcement. So, so we'll right. certainly take a look at it as part of this application. Chapter 17, General Wetlands Bylaw. Yeah. Again, yeah. are we seeking any specific that, Mike off. waivers? Did you unmute yourself? yourself? I just muted him. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I was like, whoa, somebody's quoting the regulations about it. Um, <laughs> no, and I mean, I guess the way I'm thinking about what Gene's asking about and what you're saying, Art, is that if we're talking about some kind of mitigation, you know, uh, having obviously the, the roof runoff infiltrated into the ground is one way to deal with some of that. And 
And yes, if there's some way between the house and the intermittent stream, then we could do some kind of native plantings that increase the, you know, the functions and values of the buffer zone there, including dealing with how the sump pump is draining into a resource area, um, you know, or, or buffer zone anyway. Um, I think like in my mind, that just can all kind of fall under mitigation easily enough. Certainly, certainly. So, um, well, those are all the questions I have, but I'm just gonna ask another procedural question. Um, when we're wrapping this up, if, if we're going to, can we approve this subject to receipt of a revised plan? Well, I, I, the only thing I would say about it is I feel like there's a fair bit of stuff still to be defined and I, I'm comfortable that we will get to a resolution of it, but I also feel like it's a little, like I don't know what art and, and the contractor will come up with for, you know, how to deal with the bare spots or what to do about the sump pump, you know, outlet and, and that kind of stuff. I mean, so I, there's a part of me that sort of would rather see the revised plan and have everything kind of like, we can still go through the conditions tonight. Um, but, you know, like in my mind, what we would probably end up doing is coming back and approving those conditions at the next go around anyway, but maybe what we could do is kind of hash out the conditions now and then, you know, continue the hearing to the next meeting, settle everything, close it, approve the conditions on the spot. We've done it before, especially when we have them really well defined. And also, I, I had not seen a DEP file number. Has Have you folks seen one? Or? Yeah, we do have one. Yeah, there is one. Okay. Yeah, they didn't send it to me for some reason. <laughs> Would you like to know it? Uh, sure. It's 283-0415. 0415. Great, thank you. So do uh, other commissioners, do you guys feel like you wanna see more before we close the hearing? Are you comfortable closing? I'm just voicing my opinion. One but. other thing that had come up on the site walk is uh, demarcation. And I noticed that um, the cement demarcation item, I don't know what to call them, the markers are in the Dropbox. But what we were talking about doing along the back stream area there, there were three nice rocks right along the stream. And it would be very unobtrusive. And, you know, it wouldn't be sticking up in the middle of the lawn or anything just to put some sort of plaque or I, I think we've talked about them before, but I don't know if they're copper, I don't know what they're made out of, but, um, you know, just a wetland marker that, you know, indicating no, no further work beyond this point. And there's just three nice rocks right along the bank. And we, so on the site walk, we were talking about putting the markers on those rocks. Sure. I think that's reasonable. The other thing that I feel like we haven't circled back on is uh, this analysis that Joyce is suggesting regarding section 5.2. Um, what are we, what are we thinking there? I mean, do, do, do we want to see, even if it's, you know, short and sweet, just some sort of addressing each of those, those performance standards? Um, yeah, I, I would like to see that. And art, it can be very simple, you know, one sentence in response to every one of the requirements. Certainly. No, I, I intended to do that. That's fine. Okay, great. Um, other concerns that commissioners have? I didn't mean to be premature to talk about procedure, but if other people have other questions or, or concerns. No, I think, it, I think we have enough outstanding stuff that we do need to have a quick chat about it at the next, the next one, so. Okay. Yeah, and um, I'll, get this, I'll get the plan revised and- yeah the NOI form and narrative into you ASAP. Okay, great. Um, if that's the case, do we want to spend, I, I think there's some value since we have the time in the hearing tonight of going through any conditions that are specific to this based on what Courtney wrote. Does that seem like a reasonable thing to do? Sure. Okay. All right, so let's see, I'm just gonna. Courtney, I have one comment, if I could just jump in. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and um, what you drafted under construction number 37. Can I uh, hold on before you get there? Let me let me grab the screen and share the okay. share the, the thing. Um, so I'm going to do that and then sorry for just a second. Let me grab this thing. All right. Is this, can you guys see this, the conditions? Yep. Okay. And what did you say? Where is it again? Uh, number 37 on page seven. I think um, it needs to be refined a little bit because it talks about stabilizing with native vegetation, but but uh, they have a pre-existing lawn. So some of the stabilization is going to be returning to lawn, seeding as lawn. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I copy pasted that one, didn't think it through. And then um, sounds like there will be, uh, possibly be potential plantings as mitigation. So yeah, um, when that, shows up, you'll have to refer to that in the growing season thing in the uh, certificate of compliance paragraph. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can put some kind of placeholder in there that we can quickly revise next time. That's that's all I, all my comments. Okay. Otherwise, Anybody? I think you did a really good job on this order. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for doing that. You're just telling me that, so I'll do it again in the future. <laughs> is that is that wrong? <laughs> is it a terrible job? Okay. Um, anybody else have any comments on the conditions that are in here? Do we want to walk through them at all, or is everybody pretty comfortable with what Courtney did? It's it's all the same stuff from like the last order of conditions we did. <laughs> so. Oh. Well, I mean, most of it's re repetition, right? So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, if people don't have any more they'd like to add into it, then I'm assuming we'll use this as our base. We'll get our revisions from Art that address the the comments that Joyce made and we've talked about tonight. Um, you'll mark on the site plan. So we'll we'll put in the thing about the markers. We'll mark on the site plan where the construction access is going to be. We're going to have a description of the the roof runoff and the dry well and how that's going to work and whatever is going to happen on the mitigation front. Are we missing anything? I don't think so. Okay, great. All right. Um, I move we continue this hearing until May 20th at what time, Elizabeth? 10 p.m. 10 p.m. Sorry, guys. <laughs> is, that a, is that, will you be able to come, Art? Oh, sure. <laughs> what, do you, what do you have going on at 10 o'clock? I, I, I go to bed early, Art. I guess I'll <laughs> second it. Did you smoke okay, any second? You. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, any other discussion? All right. All those in favor? Jean? Aye. Neil, aye. Courtney? Aye. All right. Who else is down there? Carol? Aye. Cindy? Aye. And Michael, if you're there? Aye. Fabulous. The motion carries. All right. We'll see you at 10 o'clock on the 20th. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, lovely. Mike, We've got time. I have FOMO. What are we missing in the other meeting? <laughs> it's not on the agenda. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Oh yeah, yeah you're right. It's a discussion yeah. item, right? Yeah. We would like what? to. Uh, What's going on over there, Michael? Oh uh, well, I I missed. Uh, I was missing most of it. I only heard a little bit of. Uh, I guess the hearing is going to close at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. And so it's unclear whether uh, it's unclear what's going to be addressed of our comments. To be honest, it didn't. Uh, they <laughs> they dealt with it while we were doing the uh, while I wanted to deal with the uh, railroad stuff. They were talking about things, so it's unclear where they're going on a lot of it. So I can't really add much other than I do want to move that whether we. Uh, that for both projects, both Coolidge Crossing, as well as the Pines and Apple Hill, 3141, that we send letters to the ZBA saying that we do not want the local regulations on fill stumps to be waived. As there's a, dra there's a draft in the, uh, in the box there that I could pull up if you want. 
um, and that I'd like to have two votes, or I would propose that we have two votes, that at least those two specific, uh, that those things are not waived, that they're included in the order, in their conditioning. Um, what did you say on Phil? I didn't hear what you said. I will pull them up. It's in the inbox for those who, I uh, will share the screen so you can see. Okay. Um, oops, actually, I, uh, I'm not gonna share the screen at the moment. Uh, and while you're struggling to share, can I ask a question about the discussion about a wetland where they wanna install the wastewater treatment plant, a potential wetland? I missed it. Okay, so I, I've, heard that there is a dispute as to whether or not there is a wetland in existence at the site where they're going to install the um, wastewater treatment. You're talking about 31 hunting at the top of the hill where there's something yes. that's like a vernal pool. Uh, yes, it's unclear whether I couldn't get an answer. We have to go listen to the meeting. I was told when I asked where they were on that. I was told to go listen to the video uh by the chair so uh so i didn't get any any status any sense of what uh is going on um let me stop the share here i can't i guess i gotta go to the dropbox can't for some reason i'm uh, so, but basic michael basically what you're suggesting is is that we send some separate notification that we'd like them to keep in force our local regulations on fill and stumps correct yes I mean, I don't think we need, there's no copy to look at unless people really want to dig into what those two. It's in, the, it's in the box here that I'm just. Right, and just as a, as a, just some background for people, when Michael and I were going through the process of editing what we produced in a special meeting, he had added in the fill and stumps and I had taken it out thinking that he was sort of making a suggestion and he wasn't. And, but I said then, well, we hadn't discussed it as putting it in. And so he's now suggesting we add it as an addendum because he thinks it's important. When you say, are you talking about tree stumps when you say fill and stumps? Yes. Okay, we have two separate items in our local regulations about it? fill and stumps. There it is. Yes. Okay. I knew we had fill, but I didn't realize we had something specifically about stumps. I'll scroll down here. We have, uh, we have these two. We all read it because we yep. can put on this. Except I actually don't quite understand the part of the fill where we need the bulldozer. Uh, I have to admit, I've never paid attention to the last part of the fill. Yeah, I didn't understand that either. It was awfully sus sus specific about bulldozers running back and forth. <laughs> yes. Um, I guess that it's trying to say that the fill should be compacted, right? So they're trying to give some metric of how that's supposed to work. Somehow we came up with that some years, many years ago. <clears throat> Can um, I make a suggestion? I, 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 I would rather talk about this project and the other elements of it that we don't know what's going on than this. I, I'm, I second your motion. I don't care at all. I think this stuff is more minor, but if we want to include it, let's include it. I'm, I'm fine with it. So I second the motion. Any discussion on it? And there's a okay. motion for both pro to do it, send it in for all of the projects, or we want that, that was that was your motion, correct? We do it one by one, I guess, or I guess we could do it together. Okay, we can do it together because that was your motion, and I seconded it. Um, any other discussion? All right, all those in favor? Gene, aye. Neil, aye. Courtney, aye. Carol. Hi. Mike. Hi. Uh, Cindy. Hi. Did I catch everybody? It's like it's, I'm in this when the screen sharing, you guys scroll off the screen. Okay. I think that's everybody. All right. The motion carries. So, yeah, let put something together, Michael. Happy to send it in. That's a good thing. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. Um, now, in terms of this other stuff, so I know that, Michael, you had a very limited sort of snapshot of what was going on over there, and you're not sure whether our comments to them, which were sub. So can I ask a question? Just to, it's more of a procedural thing because whether or not Jeannie got this comment 
letter or whether it was posted anywhere. I thought Rick Novak had it for a week and change now. So is there an issue with it not sort of being in in time? Is that what that email exchange was about? Uh, no, it was just a matter of making sure that they that it was on their record. Um, it was only okay. about making sure, but I missed whether they were gonna, whether they're going to do with it because they have a lot of input in the last minute. Right. Well, there's two separate Deshang, doc, you know, Deshang uh, submitting stuff, stuff for a lot of stuff going on, and on the and the bigger thing is the whole water supply sustainability. They had a presentation tonight. Most of the time was spent with the presentation by Nobis Engineering on their findings, which was sent out. The memo was sent out to everybody today, and he presented on it. And who's Nobis working for? As a peer reviewer. For oh, they're, they're doing peer review on that. And they and I have no idea whether they even, they were proposing a second phase um, to really figure out things. Um, in the end, the one little snippet that I did manage to catch is the problem with the fact that um, the ZBA can only deny the project if they have evidence, a health problem or some other issue. Um, and then the question is, well, until we do the testing, let's say on the sustainability of the water supply and whether it's going to impact neighboring wells or whether other things are going to happen, that until you have the results of that work, you won't know whether there's a, you don't won't have evidence to which basically it turns out that there is no way to get that evidence. So therefore, you're stuck, basically, for all you want to get the evidence and have the pump testing so that you can tell whether it's a problem. That just has to be dealt with later as part of the DEP process, even if that process is probably not as, as maybe sensitive to local needs as what we would like the ZBA to do. But the ZBA doesn't feel that it has a right to, to force that kind of testing or other kind of work as part of their permitting process. So there was oh, a lot of time spent on that. Um, I, I think they're mistaken in that because if they are acting as a conduit for local regulations and local everything else, because it's a comprehensive permit, they actually are standing instead of the Conservation Commission and the Board of Health. And so they most certainly have the, the purview to do it. It's a matter of whether they want to do it. On that. There, are no, that? there are no specific local regulations on sustainability of water supply. Well, but protection of public and private drinking water supply is certainly something that the commission would take on because it's one of the interests. I think there's a difference between having a, a, a strong a local stake in an issue and whether there are actually local regulations. And even if there were the fact that how they could, it's unclear how you accumulate evidence. Yeah. In the gray area that that I guess is not going to happen, whether we would disagree with their view about it, but that's the way the view that was taken and that the 40B to some extent, when you read it is or hear about it, was written to put to allow affordable housing to go forward quite more easily. So I could believe that the rules are fairly generous in that way. But in the end, that's, I don't know if they decided to do any of this second phase where they would do of it, but it seems sense was that, that probably that's not happening and it's all going to come to when we make public input to the DEP process in this new water supply. And that's when we all have to weigh in if that far. Well, we're still going to have an NOI before us anyway, so right. we can address some of it. We came down a little bit to that of just saying that, right, we do, that we will get to look at all the stuff that uh, I didn't get to hear whether they dealt with hydraulic, the horizontal drilling or any of that, but basically we'll be doing that all with the NOI is where most of that's going to be and the delineation of the wetland, whether there's one by the septic area or not, that'll be under the NOI. Um, and so, uh, the end, I'm not sure that we need, I'm not sure what, uh, uh, unless we want to go through and listen to the tape to see what was there, whether it's worth uh, Courtney. The time to do that. You know, I'll get around to it. I know you will. Whether you read it or whether we want to. I'll give you the cliff notes. Whether there's anything to be said. No, the question is beyond this fill and stumps, do we say anything more other than the fact that we've made our comments and we really want you to listen to them, uh, which is 
we've already done it. So I'm not quite sure what more to even submit at this point. I don't know if there's more to submit, but if they really don't take up the comments that we've made in any kind of substantive way, I think we can at least register our comments in a, in a public meeting and be like, you know. Well, if somebody wants to attend the last hearing, I think is going to be on the 27th. Great. Um, so I'll uh, jump in there. <laughs> then, uh, then you can take on that burden of, uh, of, uh, of seeing what they're going to say about that. But that's, yeah. no, it's not clear to me that it's worth doing much more on the uh, college crossing. I mean, on the 41, 31. Right. Okay. All right. Um, then let's wind that one down. We still got 10 minutes. Um, is there anything new on the Coolidge crossing side of things? About, I'm sorry, yes. before you move on, um, is it too early to be uh, putting out feelers for our independent review of this project? Of Coolidge Crossing? No, the one we were just talking about. 3141. <laughs> yeah. We haven't received an NOI. I I'm not talking about engaging somebody. I'm talking about proposing it around, sending it around, asking. Well, I, I mean, I thought we would just frankly use BSC because we like them for the other. Well, I think we still have to go out to bid. And I think it's something that uh, we, I think we can wait until the NOI is filed with us. And uh, because we don't know when that's gonna even happen given the fact that this is, might be tied up in some other legal uh, issues. This is the one where the question is whether the town will purchase some of the property and see what happens at town meeting and things like that. So certainly. You well, know, so is, is this a, hold on? Is this a situation? I didn't think we had to go out to bid. It's not like a formal bid, you know, request for a proposal. We, I mean, we've it's done not, it. But. We don't have to. If it's under a certain amount, we don't have to, and it's just best practice to do so. Okay. The foul best practice, which is getting three, if it's under five thousand dollars. Which I don't think this one will be. I agree. And you It'll need, be more than that. You need to get three. Okay. All right. We'll do it. Um, yeah, but no, agreed. We, we there's nothing to do until we. I mean, I I'm assuming we'd go out. I mean, maybe we wouldn't go to Tetra Tech, but we would certainly probably go to BSC and and um, I can't remember the other one that we talked to. But okay. Um, anything else on thirty one forty one? Uh, do we know where we are on Coolidge Crossing or do we have any updates on Coolidge Crossing? I'll venture to say that, um, right, they have come back. We missed in our last discussion some, some replies that had been sent um, and some of which we've received. It's not all in Dropbox, um, but essentially they did um, they did, uh, <clears throat> uh, things like, I'm going to just, let me see here, that's a site plan. Um, I'm going to share the screen quickly here. Um, okay. Uh, the, uh, if you see, uh, if you see the plan here. Mm -hmm. uh, they did reply on landscape plan and oh it's not uh, and they did reply on wildlife crossings they put in some crossings here if you can see my cursor even though it's not colored down here there's no real detail on it they also started putting in these little native buffer these little pockets around here here and there um or where they're going to put in some trees and shrubs. Then over here, they put in seed mix, and then they've marked various areas where you can do seed mix three, seed mix one. Um, and, and up here, there's seed mixes. Um, so they have replied on some of the landscape and wildlife. The question is whether we, for their meeting next week on uh, Wednesday, whether we, uh, they also replied on the poor, poor asphalt, saying there is a number of reasons why they didn't think it was appropriate. Um, they did reply 
on the other storm part of the storm on the long-term pollution prevention plan that they thought our three requests were really reasonable and that a uh, that some uh, conditions should be uh, let's see here I'll maybe see if this shows up here can you see a letter now yep for example they did they wrote things like we support conditions on here about de-icing and they recommend the board work with the applicant to draft a condition. Uh, and so they have these things about working with the applicant to draft something. I guess I'm willing to go to the next meeting to basically sit around and here's where they talk about wildlife. They were trying to see people kind of small so they can deal with coyotes and fox. Um, and, uh, and the peer reviewer layered down here basically Oh yeah, and they did accept the idea of putting some dimmers and motion detectors on some lights that were along the buffer zone. Um, so, uh, question is, is that in the landscape plan, they were sort of getting into the fact that they thought of, the fact to some extent, subsequent review of it could be done under the Wetlands Protection Act. Review, what A sort of has here. I would think that maybe we just write back a brief letter that we can draft, don't have to draft tonight, but the principles would be that um, that we accept the idea on the stormwater on the porous asphalt, uh, or maybe just be silent on that, actually. Um, and um, say that we look forward to working out conditions on the long-term pollution prevention plan um, and that on the wildlife say that we would appreciate that they put it in there and the details of that will be worked out during the NOI process. And that on the landscape that we say that it's, we appreciate that they've put in some improvements and some more details that we would want to have going back to the plan that we would note in a letter to them saying that uh, that we would like to have this kind of you know, this kind of native buffer areas that they're proposing that basically they should be bigger, contiguous with the actual wetland, contiguous with each other, that they can be much more extensive, uh, especially in this no alteration zone, that there should be a contiguous areas behind these two buildings. Um, and that we would and that we appreciate all the seating and other things, but that all of that kind of stuff that we'd like them to, there should be more of it, contiguous, contiguous with the wetland and deal with native species. And that we would, that we would like if they would put that kind of condition in a uh, comprehensive permit, or we will basically address with uh, reviewing this in more detail in the uh, NOI process. And we just make those kind of comments about the landscaping plan to that effect. Um, and a short letter just sort of getting back to them that if we agree on those points, I could draft. Um, and, the, and some markers for the, uh, for the no, to the extent of where those, I'm not sure I'd put it at the no alteration zone. I would suggest that we would work them out putting them in the areas that are, I mean, maybe we should wait until the NOI on the markers because we can see what we get demarcated or what we could get protected. So maybe that one would get dropped, but that's a suggestion. I, th I think it's a good idea. We might as well sort of get one last sort of suggest set of suggestions in there based on what they've come back with. And I'm sorry if you already said this, Michael, I missed it. Uh, when is uh, when are they wrapping up? When is the next meeting? The next meeting is on the 12th of May. I'm not sure whether they are going to have a meeting after that. Okay. Uh, I think it's the very end of it, but that's at least a meeting. That they, we... so they sounded like they really wanted to wrap things up. So, but I don't think they said we're going to wrap it up next time. Mm -hmm. I have a question about the wildlife crossings because it just is like six inches is just like what is for one thing what I do we have any idea what that would actually look like but it just seems entirely inadequate um 
you know, I, I've certainly have read about these wildlife crossings that actually go under um, pavement, for instance, that are very effective. Um, and I don't remember how much fill they're bringing in here, but I think it's probably a lot. Uh, what I was suggesting, though, is that as you read in the letter that's on the screen on the point 4A, yep. we're concerned about it being limiting its size because uh, their experience is, is that it's frequented by coyotes and fox. So it becomes a, uh, a feeding ground, which it still might become a feeding ground at the ends anyway. Um, but I would, what I'm suggesting is that we just say that we appreciate the putting in there, but the details of those crossings will will review uh, during the uh, WPA and NOI process. That I don't, I'm suggesting that we don't get into trying to sort that out now. Okay. okay. Do so, we have any idea what it actually was, though? Do, could you tell from the detail, Michael, like what they're propose, what they were proposing that they think um, ends up being a conduit and the kind of a little trap where all the predators are? I, no, I, I did not. I didn't look at everything, but I did not see anything other than markings that are very short and limited on the plan. So, so in, in the interest of time, because we have a hearing, we have to open up. Um, do we, Michael, did you say that you would take a first stab at a uh, response letter? Yes, but I'd like to just get a vote that those are the issues that are going to be in the letter so that we can get it into them for next week. Do I we need to vote on the issues? Yes, what? Second. I said I moved that those are the issues that should be in the letter. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, Jean? Aye. Neil, aye. Car uh, Courtney? Aye. Carol? Aye. Michael? Aye. Cindy? Aye. Done. Michael, will you send, I guess you're going to, uh, do you want to do the same thing where we send to me and Carol and we do a little bit of last minute tinkering and off it goes? Sure. Sounds thank good. You, Michael. It thank until, you. Uh, it won't happen until Monday. That's fine. All right. Thanks, Michael. You can take All the right. weekend off, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> so I have another mission for this weekend. Both good. All right. <laughs> Fantastic. We've got a let's let's jump to our next thing because we have a seven course Bruck notice of just hold on. Um, this is new, right? This is not a continuation. That's right. okay, thank you. All right. Let me read my little spiel here. Um, Sorry, I just got to pull it up. Um, okay, so notice is hereby given that the Conservation Commission of the Town of Sherburne is holding a virtual public hearing um, at Sherburne Town Hall, 19 Washington Street, Sherburne, Mass. at 9.30 p.m. on the sixth day of May, 2021. The hearing is held pursuant to chapter 131, section 40 of the general laws as amended the Wetland Protection Act and the Sherburne Wetlands Bylaw, chapter 17, to consider a proposal by Three Oaks Environmental on behalf of Varley Souza, to replace a septic system at Seven Course Brook Road, Map 1 and Lot 28. Work uh, may be performed within the buffer zone. This application is available for viewing at the Sherburne Conservation Office. All persons desiring to be heard will be given the opportunity to speak at this hearing. All right, so we have somebody representing the applicant who's gonna present. Yes. Uh, Mary, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, Mary Pinto, Three Oaks Environmental. Uh, I submitted the notice of intent and I've responded to the commission's request for additional information. Um, just kind of getting up to speed with the, the local bylaw and submitted the appendices um, after initially having those attached to the notice of intent. Um, since that time, the commission conducted a site visit on Saturday and came up with a list of recommendations. I contacted uh, Liz Dupree, the uh, design engineer for the septic system, and sent her the comments that uh, the commission um, had made after the uh, site inspection. Um, she was able to revise the plan and has overnighted the uh, hard copies of the plan, uh, but she also sent the PDF. Uh, uh, just looking at my calendar. I'm not dogmatic about that. You say you want to go to the 27th. Michael right. needs to get oh. muted again. Michael needs to be muted. <laughs> I muted him. Sorry about that, Marion. Go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so the, the uh, 
essentially we've we've taken in uh move the erosion controls in closer to the work area still needing room to get equipment around the uh the leach field and um the areas where stockpiles are proposed are outside of the 100 foot buffer zone but they are now shown on the plan uh the system itself i spoke with liz it's based upon the topography and she looked at moving it but there are elevation changes and it would require a larger footprint because of fill and she also said that there was a low area that basically sheds water off the property into the wetland and by moving the system into that area it would block water from reaching the wetland it may actually influence the septic system itself. So in looking at moving that, she did not recommend it that it be moved. Uh, the existing lawn line is shown and the proposed, the limit of the proposed lawn line um, is within the erosion control barrier. The uh, system itself will need to be maintained as, as grass above it. Uh, and the wetland markers she also shows on the plan that the four at four points on the erosion control barrier so no work will occur in the future <laughs> beyond those points without going back to the conservation commission if there were to be some work ever proposed beyond those points At this point, uh, if you have any questions for me, I didn't design the plan and the, the wetlands delineation itself was conducted by uh, another uh, consultant. And I believe that was reviewed by, by Joyce. We spoke about it. There was an isolated wetland area that had been shown on the plan and she went through and there, there were no wetland soils in that area. So. The delineation um, after the review, we submitted a, a request for determination initially, um, but because trees were being cut down, we had to file a notice of intent uh, with a positive determination. So I think that sums it up at this point. Okay, Joyce, it looks like you had a series of comments that are part of your summary. Did you want to talk about those? Uh, yes, yeah. so I think they've addressed. Entry uh, here now. Thank you, Ray. Uh, they have addressed most of my questions. If I could uh, share my screen. Yeah, go ahead. So, um, I was originally the erosion control barrier was stretched out a bit. I think it was the same area over here, and that stretched out to the property line. You can see this line right here, that's the grading line. So what they did was they uh, they scooched the erosion control barrier down slightly. I understand not being able to move this. What we talked about, could the system be moved in uh, towards the property line, towards the shed area to get it outside the 100 foot buffer zone. But the, 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 the comments that the engineer made are perfectly legitimate. Um, there is a low spot here that takes water that comes off the end of the driveway and directs it towards the wetland. And that if this moved over here, it's, it's very possible that water would shed towards the abutter. Um, they've, shown the, they've shown four bounds, uh, one here, 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 and here around the edge. Uh, and that was one of the things we talked about. Uh, they, they do show... Um, I guess uh, they showed the limit of the existing lawn. Um, and I guess it, it would just want to be make it clear in the order that the erosion control and the bounds of the limit of any future lawn. Um, the only thing, uh, 
but basically they addressed my comments. The only only comment I have is that one of the the comments that had been made in the field were, you know, they're taking down. I, I marked the trees that are coming out in red here. Um, a lot of these trees are outside the 100 foot buffer zone, keeping in mind that this is the 100 foot buffer zone. There are 14 trees that are coming down within the area of work. And I didn't know if there was any potential mitigation that you sometimes you ask for. Um, but other than that, they have addressed um, the comments that I had. Okay. Do people have questions? Uh, there was a comment about uh, that they should consider an invasive species management plan. That's, yeah, I did. I, there's a lot of invasive species, there's a lot of invasive things out there all throughout the area. And perhaps that would be a mit as mitigation for activity in the buffer zone. If, if, it could, if they could be made aware of what species they should be looking for. How could, how could that, how would we condition that? Joyce, do you remember what was out there? It seems to me that there was quite a bit of buckthorn. There was buckthorn, there was, um, uh, yep, viney thing. Uh, bittersweet. Um, Bayberry. Bittersweet. There was um, bittersweet. the wild mustard. Oh, garlic mustard? Garlic mustard, yeah. It so there, was, there were a lot of things to pick from, but then, like, you know, but then we get into if they start to remove these things, do we just let everything grow back or how do we, how do we control mm -hmm. what they do? Is it something that goes on for a period of time, like, a, like monitoring for a, a, a planting plan? You know, do we do a three year review or, I mean, this is a septic system and um, it's kind of a, a Something that they have to do. It's not something that they necessarily want to do, um, and so you kind of have to balance what. Well, you don't have to do anything, but um, it, sometimes you want to balance what you have to ask for with with the. Right. I, have a I mean, I. <laughs> I think I think we can make a we can put in a condition that's merely a suggestion that they do it and and I, I would leave it at that in this kind of situation myself. They might they might want to focus on the bittersweet because yeah. some of it looked like it was getting super aggressive with some of their trees and I, I feel like you know if if it takes a couple trees down. Um, that's going to change the shading in the area. So, I would actually agree with that. The uh, the bittersweet is terribly aggressive, and that can be if the landowner is made aware of what that is, and that it's pretty obvious that the way that climbs up around trees, uh, if it's cut at the base, it'll die. But you'll have to keep after it over time to just. Uh, I'd be happy while there's an open order of conditions to make sure that the bittersweet is uh, cut back so that it does not continue to pull down uh, or grow up on the trees and uh, potentially damage them. If that's okay with the landowner. That would probably be the easiest to do. Yeah. Joyce, I have a question, um, just a clarifying question. The four boundary points that you mentioned on the plan, is that like demarcation? Is that what that is? So that's to, to well, that, that would mark that there would be no further work beyond this point. But really, uh, um, the, again, the 100 foot is here. So they've marked it at the limit of the existing work. And put then put one additional one uh, halfway between above the seventy five. So is that permanent or is that temporary? No, those are permanent markers. Those are uh, what you know. What usually we put concrete, whatever you put, there would be like a concrete bound sitting up two feet or something with a plaque on it. Okay, thank you. Can you um, 
Joyce, did you pull this up from the Dropbox? No. Can somebody pull up the the marker illustration that's in the Dropbox, please? That's um, I can do it. Hold on a sec. I just wanted to make um, Marianne aware of this. And if you could scroll down to the additional language at the bottom, please, Neil. So this, this is what we're recommending. And you can vary the materials that are used. But we'd like it to be put at this sort of depth into the ground, unless they choose to use boulders. In the case of boulders, um, they should be boulders that cannot be moved manually. Okay. And this will be placed in the order so that if at least the wording would be if someone could email that to to me so that we have it. Yeah, okay. I'll do that. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Are there other Questions, concerns? Well, I mean, Neil, you said you'd be okay with uh, not proposing any mitigation, but I there are a lot of trees coming down in the jurisdictional area. So I'm, you know, uh, just feel a little funny leaving it at that. But um, did I say that about this project? I think you did. <laughs> yeah, kind of. So, so th there is an area um, to the. It was about the other project. Um, away from that isolated pocket. Uh, if you remember, there's some test pit disturbance over towards the. Uh, I'm going to share real quick again, just to. Over in this area here. If you recall, there was, you know, if you wanted to put in either some shrubs or a couple of trees over in this area here, uh, there was, there isn't a lot of coverage in there. So, you know, that's a potential area or even along the side, we, you don't want to, this is a shallow system so that no plantings want to go too close to it. Mm -hmm. But, but um, you know, even off in this side right here, there's, it looks like it's fairly open and you could do something there without impacting too much. You know, the simplest thing I can think of is to, it, it's not, like you said, it doesn't have much vegetation now. Uh, the simplest thing I can think of is, see, is seeding it with a, a native mix and, you know, having it just mowed once a year. Yeah, I would like to see. With this, these areas inside the? No. Um, out here? Yeah, right. What would be in the inside areas? I didn't really think that that was grassy over there. It was more yeah. like woodsy. It, it is kind of woodsy over this area right around the test pit. There were two test pits. Um, they're showing side by side, but they were kind of maybe one was really spread out. Um, you know, that's an area that that might extend over into here that could be, but this wasn't really, it really wasn't something you could see. If I recall from what I was saying, the area that we saw that was disturbed, Gene, I think is inside the erosion control barrier. Oh, okay. Well, we can't, I don't know, can we ask for native seed covering the system and going around the system? No, it has to be grassed under the Board of Health requires it to be grassed and they have to mow it after. Uh, That's what I thought. They can't get a certificate of compliance till two growing seasons. Right. I mean, I mean, two mowing. Right. Well, I don't know. I'm just making a suggestion for um, mitigation for the loss of the trees, but I'm not thinking very creatively at the moment. Sorry. How about some kind of, I don't know, tree or shrub in that woodsy area that's over here? Yeah. So what if you ask for a couple of trees? Yeah. I mean, I'm good with that. I don't know how other people Marianne, do you have any thoughts? Uh, one thing I was thinking is that maybe along uh, 
in between each of the markers, planting uh, something that won't expand roots out into the system, but some rhododendrons maybe, or so, something that really, besides the markers, you know, shows that that's the limit of the lawn. Sure, you know, if you are, if you want to come up with a native. Yeah, native, I was just gonna yeah. say, there is a native rhododendron, but deer love it. So maybe something like. Deer love uh, all the rhododendrons. Yeah, they do, the but especially maybe. the native ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. But there's also like Ilex verticillata, you know, the native holly, Blueberry, yeah. beautiful red berries, yeah. and that could be very pretty as a landscaping plant as well. And it does grow uh, above the wetland. Um, it can grow above the wetland, so. I think you got yeah. the groundwater here shallow enough to support that. Excuse me? You, I think you have groundwater here shallow enough to support the um, winter. Yeah, just to, yeah. I'll just uh, throw in my two cents. If you're going to talk about planting shrubs, then um, I always think in Sherburne, it should be deciduous shrubs because when you've got evergreen shrubs, as the only source of food in the winter, the deer are going to eat them. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yep. unfortunately. But inkberry. Yeah, or hibiscus yeah, blueberries. Or... They didn't eat my inkberry all winter. Yeah. But they my Ilex verticillata also didn't get eaten. So I don't know. It's so random. It's so hard to know. Yeah, I my inkberries also did not get eaten, but they're also not planted in their in their path. <laughs> so I don't know. It's yeah, it's well, I don't think any native shrubs are actually deer proof. So I could propose oh, okay. uh, bare root uh, ilex, uh, half a dozen uh, bare root ilex in the area that's where the uh, test pits were done and that there's some bare area. I've had great success years ago with a, you know, kind of a bare root shrub that really took off and did great. Mm. You're talking about Ilex verticillata? Yes. Okay, it's it's evergreen. It's going to get eaten. No, 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 they, they, they fall off. It's yeah. not evergreen. No. It's not evergreen. Huh? Berries. I think she's referring to winter berries. Oh, that's yeah. Okay, yes. I'm sorry. I was thinking of Elix glabra. Sorry. Oh, yeah. No. All right. There we go. But yeah. I, I, my glabra, which is the black, that's the other one, right? Yeah, that's that's it. Neither, weirdly. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, <laughs> no, I, Carol, I've had the same thing. I have them planted and the deer don't touch them. Yeah. I don't know why. Well, right now at the barber in our little garden next to the barn, you can go and see the Elix glabra that have been completely defoliated by okay. deer. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's hit or <clears> miss. <throat> So do we have a consensus on generally yeah. what we're looking at in terms of mitigation plantings? I think we're, I think we do. So you're okay, thinking great. six, six yeah. will be sufficient? Everyone? Do you um, think so? Um, uh, yeah, I think, you know, for what they're doing, I think, um, and, and Marianne, you, instead of, you originally talked about putting them along the edge, now you're saying somewhere over here? I, whatever you would prefer. I mean, even closer to the uh, the fifty foot would be as they take off a little bit better. I think um, behind the system along that I right can put. Yeah, yes, exactly. All right. If you're doing bare root, um, if you're doing bare root, that's fairly easy to get a hold of. Would yeah. you consider doing twelve? I'm not trying yeah. to negotiate. I'm just saying it's I, definitely. It's too bad. I, this didn't happen. I just got some from the Worcester County uh, Conservation District and planted them in a wetland in uh, Lunenburg. But they were beautiful shrubs too. You're just uh, give them a better chance for success. I'm not trying to double your numbers. I'm just trying to give them a chance to survive. Yeah, yeah. I, planted, well, I planted 10 of those this last weekend. Okay. So a dozen would be fine. A, a nice shrub. The birds really like the berries. So. Yeah, they do. Okay. That addressed all my comments. Okay. Any other questions or comments? So for this one, we don't have a draft order at the moment. Um, are we gonna, do we wanna close the hearing and draft it or do we wanna wait until we have a draft and close it the next meeting? Um, I would 
suggest that we close and if this is okay with people and approve because they need to get moving with the board of health Okay. Okay, so does anybody want to craft a motion here that encompasses those contingencies? No, I have a headache. You do it. <laughs> Sorry, neighbor's dog. Um, uh, let's see. I move that. Well, I don't even have the language in front of me. I mean, <clears throat> I move that we close the hearing and approve this project contingent upon drafting of an order, drafting and approval of the order of conditions as discussed here tonight. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, Jean? Aye. Neil, aye. Courtney? Aye. Carol? Aye. Michael? Aye. Cindy? Aye. Okay. Um, great. So we will put together a draft order of conditions. I'm assuming we'll put this on the next agenda somewhere in there, but obviously the hearing's closed, so we just need to get it together and, and do our final approval of it. Okay. Yeah, the uh, other permits were dependent upon this approval, so I, I really appreciate it. Thank Not a problem. So okay. Yeah, All right. So we will uh, see you next time. Will they be able to go to the Board of Health with just us closing the hearing? Oh, I guess we've approved it. We approved it. Yeah, Ellen will not schedule it without all the written paperwork. What's that? What's that Ellen mean? will not schedule the hearing until she has the WPA form and the special conditions. Oi. All right. So we have to do it if we're trying to be responsive, given how long this is, whether we have to see what could be done sooner than later. So I'm. Um, this is one that I'm gonna work on, Jean. Okay. Please. Yeah, so I will try and get this written up and then circulate it. Okay. So I I move that we allow Joyce to work on this, circulate it, and that we just trust that our temporary agent and with eyes on it, um, that it would be sufficient for us to send it over to the Board of Health. Mm -hmm. You think we even have to vote on that, though, Neil? We normally, we never do it. We never vote on the order because, we, because in the past, when we have an agent, we generally they just write up the pass it out there. Uh, I don't think we ever. Uh, whatever. I, I, I don't know if people object to voting. <laughs> well, I mean, I think we can. It seems like we all vote. I, uh, listen, I'll withdraw the motion. I just thought that we've always come together and voted on the final order in the next, even after we close the hearing. Maybe we should move to trust Joyce. That's what I was basically trying to say, but I'm fine to. I'm look. fine with voting on it. I'm just saying. I'm just pointing out the fact that historically we have not done it this then, way. Then I withdraw my motion, and Joyce okay. is going to work on it, and it's going to go to the Board of Health without us seeing it again. Yeah, unless anybody wants to speak now, and work that's why it. I made it a motion. Yeah. <laughs> fine. All right. <laughs> I don't. I, I withdraw my motion. Carry on. Thank you, Joyce. Well, I want to vote. <laughs> Fine, then make a motion. Then make a no, no, stop no. it. No, it's over. No mas. You, you ruined it, Michael. We had a perfectly good motion, and you killed it. <laughs> Just <laughs> sorry. All right. Somebody mute him. <laughs> I'll take some. I'll take some guilt on that too. Yeah, she started. Uh, that's, that's true. true. Carol started it. Oh, All right. I'm going to put okay. one of for a dozen. Uh, Alex, for just the latter. Okay. <laughs> And, and I thought you were ordering us like uh, some alcoholic beverage for the <laughs> for the favor, a twelve pack of something. You know, it's like clock. We're ready. Okay. Procedurally, procedurally, okay. did you actually vote again? What's that? Procedurally, procedurally, did you actually vote to close the hearing? I, I might have missed all that. We voted to close the hearing and approve the project. So all okay. we need is the order. We're ready to go. Yes. One vote. Yes. What's that? We did it as one vote. Normally, we do have two votes. We vote on the we vote to close the hearing, and then normally we vote on the findings. Well, we're breaking with history once again. That's, That's it. it. We historically have always right. chart, we're charting a new path. Okay, Very let's good. move on. Um, all right, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Marianne. You're welcome. Good night. All right, good night. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you. All right. Um, what's next? Uh,
we've got some site issues, that kind of stuff. We've got 15 minutes before the next hearing. Let's see how much of this stuff we can bang out. Oh my God, let's wrap up everything we can. Let's do it, no, no dawdling. Uh, site issues, you said, Elizabeth, you had some stuff under that. Uh, I have one more thing, 32 Peckham Hill Road changed owners. They had emailed Dave asking about open orders of conditions. I guess they didn't get a response back. So they emailed again to his email this week. So it comes to me and a new owner has taken ownership of the property and the order is still open. So they want to file for the COC for the septic system. So my question is, are we going to charge the new owner the $200 COC price or the order is expired or are we going to charge them the original price of the order as it is in our regulations? The original price of the notice. I mean, yeah, the notice, sorry. Yeah. So yeah, it's a difference of uh, several hundred dollars, but you know, I, I really, I don't like pushing that on people, but the reason it's there, the reason we charge more for COCs when an order is expired is because, you know, it, with that information, people are incentivized to file for a COC before the order expires. But if we keep waiving that fee. But this is a new it, owner. This is a new owner. The property changed hands. Yeah, right. Shouldn't yeah. their attorney have caught that? Their attorney did email Dave, but he didn't respond. I, when did it expire? Whose attorney? <laughs> the real <laughs> attorney. I don't know whose attorney. The new buyer's attorney. Um, it's been expired for quite a while. I'm not sure the exact year it was issued, but it's an old so, one. Yeah, so it's not really just a matter of Dave not responding. Right. right. It's been expired, but that person's long gone. They sold the house and have moved on. Right. So if we're trying to figure out whether whether the new owner ought to be responsible for the old owner letting the order expire without getting the COC, is that really what's at issue? Yes, here? that's what the issue is. Do you want me to tell them to pay the full NOI price or are we going to let them just pay the $200? Guess the title lawyer should have found it. Um, but she should have. Right. Interesting. Maybe we should make the title lawyer pay the difference. Well, <laughs> they probably had to take out title insurance. The new well, owner probably had to take out title insurance on the title lawyer. So that would probably kick in. Yeah, but I, don't I guess so. What do our regs say about this? Our regs say, it's expired. say that if the order is expired, the cost of the COC is the same as the cost of the original notice of intent. Then that's what we should do. I guess Elizabeth is asking, are these special circumstances where we would waive that and just ask them to pay the regular COC fee? If, if the spirit of the law is to try to get the person who originally had the order issued, well, let me put it this way or my perspective, if the original intent of this regulation was to get the original person who had the order to get the COC, um, obviously there's a loophole where if they sell, they can say, oh, I'm gonna sell the house and so I don't have to worry about it. And they're gonna pass it off on the new owner. And yeah, should, should there, I, I don't, I personally, I don't like the idea, well, you know, too bad because they should have caught it. Like, I don't know. I mean, this is a new owner. I'd rather be more lenient because I don't think it matters much in terms of our budget. So I would agree with that. I just think what we do, it has to be consistent. So, so, so maybe we are allowed to be consistent. Mr. Chair, can I make a comment about the loophole? Sure, Sean. Let me put my former uh, hat on because this may actually apply to me. Um, Which hat? It, it, it's, it's not a loophole where you, you would build a house and sell the house. Um, and it, that wouldn't be signed off for at least a year after. Um, <clears throat> so, so the, the 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 builder would never be able to get that signed off. I, I shouldn't say never, but I, I wouldn't have been able to get it signed off because there was no vegetation. I, I think my order had a year of uh, vegetation in the wetlands. So, I mean, you. Although it wouldn't have, although it wouldn't have expired, you—it's not a loophole. 
Um, but you, I mean, you'd also, you'd be put an, on an onerous cost on the new owners to, to charge them what you charged me for the original site plan and the OOC. Not, not that any specific one expired, but no. even if it expired, it, you, it, it's, it's not a loophole. It's, it's, it's a matter of whether or not you got vegetation to, to take hold in, in wetlands. Oh yeah, but that was in a case of whether you had to have growing seasons. I would come around to saying that. that uh, that's what I mean. It, there's a growing season. It, it, it's not a loophole. It's it's just a timing thing. Oh yeah, but this goes beyond that. In this case, Sean, this is basically going beyond those growing seasons. In this case, I, I'm, I'm gathering. In a different case, right? And and I'm not saying I I understand the case, but I'm saying in a in a you can't generalize it as a as a full loophole. Yeah, no, I don't think of it as I think that you'd, you'd never want one to expire and then just and and it or you wouldn't want to generalize it and say all of them expire and everyone should pay it as a second cost because you'd have to actually someone someone might call you out and justify well how did you add, <laughs> actually expend that cost because I paid over five thousand dollars for my OOC um, and I and if you if you were to double that up I. I you'd be hard pressed to, to find how you'd justify that. I'm fine with the fact that as to consistency that when a new owner inherits a mistake from the past that, uh, that I'm generally, that I think we've generally not, we've generally voted not to impose that penalty because it's as Neil said, I guess. And I, I think we've generally been consistent in not, uh, and not superimposing a burden on uh, a new owner who even though the title person should have found that I'm, I'm fine with not, I'm fine yeah. with leaving the. Uh... And, and I would say to Carol's point, I think we should be consistent. And I think in this kind of a sort of a, this sort of weird overlapping circumstance, I would love to, and we don't have to do it in the context of this discussion, but I would love to, you know, have a kind of a standing policy or not even a written one, but just one where, you know, if this kind of situation arises where the old order the COC has never gotten and the house changes hands that the new owner only has to pay the COC fee, not the entire NOI fee or whatever it ends up being. I mean, I'm fine with that. So, I mean, I mean, look, we obviously there's people with difference of opinion. I haven't heard from Jean or Courtney on it yet. What do you guys think? I, I agreed with you and Michael. Okay. I just, I mean, I understand the circumstance is uh, comes as an, an unfair surprise and burden to the new homeowner. And it's because the things that we put in place didn't work. Um, but I, I'm just wary of, it seems like we've done this a few times in the last couple of years, we've waived this provision. And um, if we're going to have circumstances where we're always going to waive this provision, then we ought to codify it somehow. I except, agree with you on that. In the case of blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I agree with you on that. So there are conditions in, in the orders, but once again, how do we enforce them? Uh, that say the commission shall be notified in writing at the time of all transfers of title on this property um, prior to the issuance of the certificate of compliance. <laughs> okay, but that didn't happen. And it also says a signed document indicating that the new owner has read the order condition shall be forwarded to the commission. And this condition is to remain in perpetuity. I mean, where can we? Uh, I, mean, I think those conditions came from my order conditions for my house and this property is prior to me starting working in Sherborne's. So it wouldn't, those yeah. two conditions wouldn't apply probably to this order. Right, but they're good, and they're good conditions, but even putting them in every order, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, enforcement or compliance with this is, is almost impossible. Well, I, I sorry, think we should ahead. discuss this in greater detail at another meeting and just give Elizabeth an answer on this particular case. It is totally worthy of discussion, but I can't. I can't think anymore. Well, I, even if you 
could think. I, I, I do think it's uh, a full discussion about this is in order, but it is not for tonight. And so I agree with you, Courtney. So um, do we do we want to put this to a vote since we're split? Sure. Good. Okay. I'm, I move that we uh, we only charge the new homeowner the certificate of compliance fee. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, Jean? Aye. Neil? Aye. Uh, Courtney? Aye. Carol? Aye. Did you say aye? Yes. Uh, Michael? Aye. Cindy? Aye. Okay, the motion passes. But let's, I mean, I, I don't know when the hell we're gonna have time, but let's talk about it, because I agree it's, it is a sort of a, a it is a loophole in the sense that like somebody could get out of paying the certificate of compliance fee and then sell their house. I, I, I don't think necessarily that even if we've had a few of them that people are catching on that they can do this. I think it's just more of like it's come up a lot. So, um, but yeah, let's figure out how to fix that. Okay, what other issues do we have? I don't have any other issues. Somebody was asking about, what were you asking about? Hunting Lane or something? I can't remember. <laughs> Underside issues. No? I have, well, I s emailed you about a site issue about Silverwood, whether I can uh, proceed with prodding, talking to Jonathan about doing the uh, work that was outstanding on Attention Basin 3, fixing up some, some, uh, barriers and adjusting his the water flows there. Well, his, his order of conditions is still, I mean, it's not about to expire. I mean, you can remind him. But I was just checking before I proceed. Because yeah, no, I, I, I was approached by a neighbor who was concerned about the water levels in their backyard. Okay, I think it's fine. Um, all right, do we have these two <laughs> violations? Um, 68? Hold on one second, we didn't talk yeah. about Sewell Brook and the unauthorized bike trails. Kill me. I mean, yeah, Sorry. go ahead. <laughs> you had gone on that site visit, you'd, you'd want to commit suicide. <laughs> the area yeah. is so carved up, it's terrible. It was very depressing for me mm -hmm. to see that. And I asked for permission to speak to council um, on, um, just on one piece of it, I, I want, and I haven't gotten permission yet, but I want to talk to council about uh, what to do when some of the unauthorized bike trail work actually creates uh, safety hazards, which is in, in the case of the, the Sulbrook, there are two, possibly three very unsafe things that are out there for work that we didn't permit. So I'm, I think we need to get into that just so we're well informed, but uh, honestly, I don't have anything to say about what we can do about the Sulbrook area because um, it's it's a couple of miles at least of trails that that we did not allow. And uh, the, the work one thought I had, which just kind of surprised my husband, was it's such a mess. Um, perhaps we should consider just designating that unfortunate piece of conservation land as suitable for mountain bikes. I was thinking the opposite, just close the close it down and stop public access there. Neil, it's so extensive. And one of the, I think my thought when I was there is first of all, there's two abutters who have created trails that go straight up into their properties. So you get a pretty good idea of some of the people who are involved, but I think it is so extensive that my immediate thought was that, you know, um, there are some people, some butters who, you know, had this conservation land where there really were very little or maybe no trails. And at some point they thought, well, we need trails. You know, this is our local conservation land. We want to enjoy it. We need trails. So they just created trails. And I think that the, if we just say, okay, we're going to shut down this quite big network of trails, it'll be like whack-a-mole because they'll just start reopening them. So, you know, my feeling, I mentioned this to Kelly as well, is that we need to, um, 
notify the abutters. I think we need to have some hearings. I think we need to talk to them, give them an opportunity to tell us if they think that there should be trails. We need to get some buy-in by these abutters and decide, okay, we're closing down all the trails except one or whatever our decision is, because it is such, there's just so many trails there. You know, it's just amazing what they've done out there. And I don't personally feel like we should just say, well, okay, this, we, I mean, I think we should go through some process before we kind of throw it over to the mountain banks because some of these trails are so close to the wetlands or really basically in the wetlands that some of them certainly have to be taken closed down. But it's a mess. Well, it's, you know, contacting the abutters is a great idea. Uh, who's got the time to write that? And what do we do once, what do we say? I mean, I think, I think the first thing we do is we let them know that it's a violation and tell them that we have arranged a hearing date and we'd like people in the neighborhood to come and speak to the commission. We'd like to hear their opinions. We'd like to understand why these trails were built if they, if they care to share that with us. I think that among other things, if they're, if they, you know, if they did it in some mistaken way, they may step forward and say, hey, you know, I didn't know, but I really want to have a trail there. And then we can have an opportunity to educate them. I think we know why they want to have a trail. I think we just have to, whether we just leaflet the, the Deerfield area as a start with just those houses and say, there are trails there that are, uh, that are unauthorized, or there's safety issues and wetland issues. And uh, we want to talk about the trails there. And we want to set a date. And we give them a few dates. And we give them an email contact and they can just send it in. And it doesn't have to be a letter more than what I just said. Um, and without getting into, uh, other than just stating our two issues about the wetlands and the safety, and that they need to, and that they're unauthorized. And, and we want to talk with everybody about it and see if we can get people to reply and figure out a date when we have a little discussion. I think that's a good idea. Good start. We'll yeah. see. We'll see if anyone responds. Right, exactly. If they don't respond, and uh, then maybe it has to be a little bit harsher about the fact that they're violations, or we have to go out there and post signs. I, I think if we tried to close a piece of conservation land, that would raise eyebrows. That oh, might yeah. get some, that might get some movement. I'm not in favor personally, of yeah. but okay. Um, well, look, we gotta we gotta move on to the to the next next thing on our agenda. So let's do that. Um, so we're reopening the notice of intent to 21 Prospect Street. Can and somebody is, say is where? Oh, there's Dan. Here? He is. Hi, Dan. How are you? Good. Made it. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, easy peasy. Um, I drafted the order. You only got it yesterday, or maybe even this morning. I don't know. But I mean, if you recall the hearing, um, most of this order of conditions is boilerplate. And uh, the only Thing we asked of Dan further was that he revised this, this, the plan to show an extension of the erosion control, and he did that. So uh, this has to be approved. We did not vote to approve this, but so that has to be accomplished tonight. And if anybody wants to comment on the conditions, this is the opportunity to do that. Has anybody had a chance to look at the order of conditions and does anyone have any comments on it? I did look at it and I don't have any comments on it. I don't have any comments, but I did is not. There, is, is there anything of note, Gene, within the conditions? No. <laughs> okay. No, I mean, it's, you know, because otherwise we kind of know what goes into these. And so there's, you yeah, know, like, if there's no surprises in there, unusual conditions, no then surprises. there were no, there was no need for any mitigation. Okay. Um, so 
Right. If there's oh. nothing more than what we already discussed at the last meeting, then right, right. You need, then I'm fine. Okay. Well, you just need to approve the conditions and read some here, um, some findings. So I never remember the sequence of this. We close the hearing first, and then we do the findings, and then we approve. Correct? No, nope. we close the hearing at the last meeting. Oh no. Yeah. No, we didn't. Oh, we didn't. We didn't no, because we didn't. there was no. This is a continued hearing. That the oh, okay. Hearing. No, I right. don't have a file number. In that case, I move we close the hearing. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, Jean? Aye. Neil, aye. Courtney? Aye. Carol? Aye. Michael? Aye. Cindy? Aye. Okay. All right. Um, then let me read the findings and then we can. Is this part of a motion? Again, I never get the sequence right. All right, whatever. Um, let's see. All right. Well, I remember I will... move to approve the project subject mm -hmm. to these okay. these findings and conditions. Great. Where should I start reading? D. Yes. Great. I move that we approve, given the following findings. The commission and conditions. The commission hereby finds that the work proposed to construct a replacement septic system, portions of which lie within the hundred foot buffer zone and the 50 foot no alteration zone will not result in adverse impacts to adjacent wetland resource areas. The commission further finds that the applicant has presented evidence sufficient to demonstrate that the proposed activity, including mitigation measures, will not cause altering uh, alterations to the bordering vegetated wetland during or after construction if all conditions in the order are met. Additionally, the Sherburn Conservation Commission finds that the following conditions are necessary to protect the wetland resource for the duration of this proposed project, the commission orders that all work shall be performed in accordance with said conditions and with the notice of intent referenced in the special conditions section of this order, to the extent that the following conditions modify or differ from the plans, specifications, or other proposals submitted with the notice of intent, the conditions shall control. Um, I don't think we need to read that. Uh, you don't have to go any further. Yeah, all right. So that's my motion. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, Jean? Aye. Neil, aye. Courtney? Aye. Carol? Aye. Michael? Aye. Cindy? Aye. All right, the motion carries. So, Dan, um, yes. I, I didn't know this until tonight. I thought that all we had to do was tell the Board of Health it was approved, but um, Elizabeth says that Ellen has to actually receive the paperwork. So, um, I have to do a little tweaking on the paperwork, but uh, it'll either be sent to the Board of Health and Elizabeth tomorrow or on Monday. Okay. Well, I think I don't think uh, Ellen works tomorrow anyway, so I think Monday would be fine. Okay. Great. Well, thank okay. you very much. All right. Have Let's a good night, Dan. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's see. If we have anything else, there's something under discussions, enforcement compliance policy and new enforcement approach. We have the energy. I just. Um... <laughs> While you're thinking about that, Sean, are you still there? Yeah, I was like, Michael, did you see that comment in the chat? Yeah, I did. I yeah, was reading I'm, it. I'm here. Are, are the abundance that you're worried about the, the Michelle's? Janet and so, uh, I'm worried about any butter that's affected by what we did on uh, Silverwood. Well, just so you know, I just wanted to let you know I've been out to the site last weekend. I met with uh, Janet, the Michelle's, uh, I guess the father in law or the father, depending on what you want to, which one you want to do it. And, and we're in touch. And I'm going to go talk to Silverwood about it. So. All right. Well, so when I was there, that septic was 100% flooded. The All yards right. were getting washed out. All right. So I, so I understand. We're, we're going to so, talk about it. So there's I, a ton of issues there. there. There's a lot of issues there. There's, there's definitely road road runoff that's coming into the yards above that. Right. There's definitely the everything so everything from Silverwood is dumping into those yards. Right. It's supposed to get fixed. It's supposed, so, they're supposed to do changes soon around now. So let's let's wait and see how it goes okay. when the changes in place. But it's don't worry, it's not it's not 
it's not finalized as to what should be going on. Well, it, it better not be because my my. I'm just telling it, you, it that we have to we have to move on. It, but I'm just telling you it, that we're it was really bad. It really bad what I saw. It's all right. I saw stuff too. Just wanted to let you know that things will be changing there. So now okay. just... they should be. Yes, they uh, will be. I'm going to cut you off then. Sorry, because uh, we have to go on. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. And if it's something, I mean, Michael, Michael is slated to go talk to the folks at Silverwood, and then we're going to pick it up from there. That's right, Sean. Well, Stop, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, so what else do we have? Uh, are we down to violations on 68 Maple and Map 10, Lot 80? That's the Everett Washington Street. That's the Dow's? No. Or is that something else? Yeah, there's nothing new on 68 Maple because uh, Dave never followed up on it and I haven't had a chance to. Uh, the letter that went out regarding map 10 lot 80 only was sent yesterday afternoon. Um, I don't know if you want to review the information that Courtney shared with us now. Uh, sure. Courtney, can you do that? Yeah, yeah. I totally closed it. <laughs> I got it, I got it. And then it, while we're waiting on that, there's one thing that we're gonna need to, and we're not do it tonight, but I'll just sort of put it on the radar. It's because it's slipping through the cracks. There was a concern about wood chips being blown into resource areas on Washington Street that was raised by somebody and, and it, it already had fallen through the cracks when, when Dave was the agent. So we're gonna to need to get it on one of our agendas to talk about. So you should do that definitely when the DPW director's there because it didn't slip through the cracks because the DPW director met Dave out there. Okay, right. Well, slip through the oh. cracks because he's resigned. And so we, we don't have any kind of uh, transfer of information. So we gotta, yeah. we gotta, re, we gotta loop back and, and find out what happened and then pick it up and talk about it. Sure. Right. Do it now and, and that? Again, that involves the DPW, so be really careful. Sure. Um, no, we should not do it now, Michael, because um, it's not. You should put it on your agenda and invite me to be there. That sounds good. We will do it. Please. Yeah. Can I talk now? Yes. Go ahead, Courtney. Um. So I sent you guys the forest management plan from the assessors. Uh, for map 10 lot 80. Um, it's under chapter 61. So there's a couple of different um, stands laid out in this uh, cutting plan. You know, some of them have, you know, designations for commercial harvest. Some of them are just um, low quality trees, no work will occur. Um, one stand is designated as wildlife habitat, um, no harvest planned. Um, there's nothing in the plan about filling resource areas or construction of access roads. Um, and I, I had given you guys that mock-up that some of the areas um, that were circled in the aerial photos. So I looked at those on the cutting plan. So some of those areas are, um, the filled areas are in a commercial harvest area. Um, some of them are also in, uh, appears to be in an area, other areas where that says that no harvest is planned. So it's not, it's not really clear how what was reported matches up with the forest management plan. Um, Even if there were, um, first of all, I think that the forest management plan doesn't have to verbalize um, that access is going to be created. They just have to, they, they can do it and simply follow best management practices. But um, depending on it's, you know, what it's going to take to create the access, if it's in our jurisdiction and it's of a certain um, you know, like it re requires filling, they would still, they'd probably get permission to do it, but they would still have to file, do a filing with us. 
correct? That's correct. So if if they needed to, so I had attached uh, also the, um, the information on forestry best management practices and also the um, information from the Wetlands Protection Act. So like Jean said that, you know, they're required to avoid, you know, constructing an access through a resource area unless it's like can't be avoided and they're supposed to minimize um, impacts. And, and, you know, the best management practice includes activity when the soil is dry, frozen, stable, um, you know, unallow allow passages of, you know, unobstructed passage of, you know, water flow, removing structures or fill within a year. Those are just some examples, but it also one of the conditions is that, yes, um, they do have to file that um, with us. Uh, it, it would be an NOI, but, um, what is it? Forestry, like a limited project. Um, but yeah, the Conservation Commission would um, be allowed to, through that process, to add uh, conditions. So um, access construction. If they have to create access to do commercial, to do cutting, if they have to have to create access that requires a notice of intent, do do all of those have to be eventually removed? Is that one of the best management practices? Um, I do believe that they're supposed to be removed within a year from what I read. My other question is, uh, what's the lifespan of a forest management plan? Because this was from 2012. I wonder if it's been renewed or if it's expired. Yes, you don't know. So we could ask DCR. Yeah, we should check with DCR. I know, I know there's some time span for the 61, the chapter 61. Um, maybe it's 10 years, maybe yeah. it's, you know, <laughs> nice round number, <laughs> but I don't remember off the top of my head. I think it might be. Yeah, I mean, it sounds right, but I just, I wouldn't quote me on that. Well, does anybody know if this is uh, visible from the road? It, it isn't. There's, well, there's a, um, yes in that there's like a entrance into the woods, like a, a, a path that has appeared recently and there was like a small clearing. I don't know if that's some kind of staging area and then it disappears off into the woods. From which street, from Elliott Street? From Elliott Street. I don't know about anywhere else. I commute along Elliott Street and I did, and there's been a lot of dirt on the, um, on Elliott Street right at that access point. Um, so I like, I had no idea what was going on in there. Just... Mm -hmm. So um, I wrote the enforcement letter, but I can't even remember what it says. I think it says that uh, we've asked them to appear at the next meeting at the May. That is what it says. It's in the Dropbox, May 20th. Have we heard back from them? No, they just, the, ma the letter was just mailed yesterday afternoon. Oh, okay. Yep, May 4th, yep. May 4th. Oh yes, no, it was written on May 4th. It was mailed on May 5th. Okay. <laughs> right, well, let's put that on the agenda. Elizabeth, let's give it a, a time. And we'll see what happens. On the 20th agenda? Yeah. But yeah, it's on, I have it on a holding spot. Oh, that's good. We don't have to put it like at midnight. 9.30, Courtney, sorry. It's pretty packed already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's do it earlier when we have energy. <laughs> we can't, already, all those spaces are already taken up with hearings. Yeah, with hearings. We'll drink a lot of coffee before Andrew. <laughs> So Neil, um, Neil's gone. Okay. Um, 
the only other thing to discuss other than to say, here are the administrative approvals, is that one of them, the one that's listed at the bottom, um, needs to be voided. And I don't think we've ever done this before. And um, uh, I can explain why it needs to be voided. <laughs> it was, um, an administrative approval was issued back in March and uh, which basically says that a house can be torn down, a new house can be built, a septic system can be put in and a well can be put in and that none of this work is in the jurisdictional area. But in fact, it turns out that all of it is in the jurisdictional area. So, um, so yeah, we need to, uh, and Elizabeth's already contacted the building department and the board of health, but we need to put it on the record that this administrative approval needs to be voided. So I move that we void the administrative approval for three Prospect Street. Second. Neil, are you really not here? <laughs> it looks like he's moving around just at the edge of the screen. <laughs> okay, all in favor, Jean, I. Everybody else do it. Courtney, I. Carol, I. Michael, I. Cindy, I. Motion passes. I think we're done. This is for what address was this for? Three Prospect. Which is not even on the final. Yes, it is. On the bottom. Keep scrolling. It's right um, off of Coolidge. It's just uh, the second property off of Coolidge. It's on the final agenda that I downloaded. It's... I don't see it on my final agenda either, Michael. Not the <laughs> I printed it from the Dropbox, and I don't have it on mine. So I posted the agenda twice. Yeah. It is it, on the one that was. It posted. matters what's on it's the, on the uh, website. Yeah. Okay, so there's um, okay. Elizabeth is doing something that I think is very conscientious. She's sending out a draft agenda and also the Dropbox link early because materials are in the Dropbox early, like is you know ten days before the meeting. <clears throat> but then when we get closer to the actual meeting date, the agenda is always revised. So, and then she usually sends the final agenda with the Dropbox link again, very close to the meeting day. All I'm saying is, is that the agenda that's right now in the Dropbox does not have it. Well, that's, that's crazy all. because I got my agenda from the Dropbox and it and it's on there. I'm looking it's, at it right now. It's true. I, I looked at it, and it is not there right now, but it is on the town website. So we're cool to talk about it. Okay. I don't know what, I don't know what computer, you know. All right, it's not a big deal. Some little snafu that the, the yeah. wasn't uploaded, whatever. But I'm just saying that maybe when there's, whether we have to put dates on the agendas so that they, uh, in case of that. But I mean, I've not had it happen before. So I'm not worried about the fact that there was yeah. an accident now. Hackers in the Dropbox. I don't know. I think Elizabeth is doing a really good process. I love the entire process that was outlined, and my whole life has been better since Allery and Elizabeth started sending out the Zoom link and the agenda and the Dropbox like the day before, just as a reminder so I don't have to dig through my email for the past two weeks. So thank you, Elizabeth. You're welcome. The only other thing we have to talk about is the warrant just so I can send it in. It's signed and it's in the Dropbox. Honestly, I don't remember what's on it. It's like postage. I so, approve. Yeah, I mail approved it. It's all set. Okay. We're good to go. Is that it? That's yep. it. Oh, hey, can, uh, I, can I ask you a question out. about the reprospect? Sure. Which, which is on the agenda that I was able to find on the public website. Yeah. Mark Oram asked me to look at three prospect because of a wetlands issue and a possible culvert blockage. Do you guys know anything about that? Nope. No, no. The only person that's looked at three prospect was Dave Hankels oh, who God. has resigned. And uh, we, we found out that there are wetlands there Subsequent to Dave Henkel's designing, we found out from the builder. <laughs> right. 
Well, and Mark and Mark mentioned it to me on the site walk when we were up on hunting, uh, which which is new since the septic that the Mayo's put in a couple of years ago. So, what's your question, Sean? I'm sorry. So the I, I think the builder raised the issue to Mark that there might be a a culvert that's blocked onto the road, and that this is potentially the cause of the wetland. I I have no idea. Oh, so, uh, yes, is, wait, I, I, I suppose possibly. Which, which property is this? Three this property. is three, three prospect, which is that's not on our what agenda is that on? It is on the town, it's on the public agenda. agenda. <laughs> we just had like a five <laughs> minute discussion on this. Discussion just believe about. us, Neil. Just believe us. Okay, trust me. Like, oh, you yeah, I see, I see, I see. And I didn't mean to drag you into the weeds, but I the only reason it's relevant to me is because we're getting ready to pave a road. Um, um, and I just don't I want someone to come to me in August to go, hey, rip the road up because you, your culvert's blocked right after we fixed it. What? So what do you usually do when you're paving and you find a blocked culvert? Uh, if we find it before, we'll unblock it. If we find it after, we look like idiots. I would, um, so I don't think we have any issues with you doing that sort of maintenance. Um, well, That's I don't know where it is. Uh, Mark brought it up to me because he thought the builder, somebody brought it up to him. Yeah, um, like I said, none of us know where it is. Only Dave Hanks. Joyce, Joyce has something to say. Joyce. Joyce knows where it is. Is Joyce here? Yeah. There. yeah. Did she turn down the septic? So you, you, the, you, you have me walk this one. So I walked it and observed the wetland. It's up above the house. I, I don't know that it's connected to the road, Sean, but um, it would be down gradient in front of where the house is if, if, if it came out across the street. It's, it's bleeding. It's like groundwater bleeding out and creating a little a wet meadow. Hmm. So you it don't didn't it, it didn't the exist when the septic was built? I, 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 have, no, I have no idea because the septic was installed a number of years ago. Um, so I have no idea. I, I just observed it a few weeks ago. So. so as far as going forward with any work on this site, um, you know, it's going to merit all new applications. And right. And the, and the site's not my issue. I, right. I'm just going to give them a shiny new road. And, and Mark brought it up to me and it was just, you know, kind of happenstance that he said, Hey, I think there's a cover block maybe somebody mentioned, and that happens to be one of the two roads I'm going to, upgrade this year but it, i you know i have no idea it, it, you know it's, it's one of those old historic roads that has 50 year old culvert pipes under it that some of them we know where we are where they are and some we don't mm. well okay. um maybe maybe joyce you can reach out to mark and tell him what you told us about the wetland there it sounds like Mark was asking if the blocked culvert had created the wetland. I don't believe a blocked wetland. A blocked culvert did not create this wetland. Can you can you write that to Mark? I can. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Before we right. go, before we say goodnight, I want to encourage everybody, please, to attend the pre-meeting and town meeting, just so that I'm not like the only voice <laughs> of the conservation commission. <laughs> I always attend town meeting, start to finish. No, no, this is pre-town meeting. It. Well, that's torture. <laughs> that's a Monday night. It'll. It should be entertaining. There will be, I'm sure, many, many comments from many. Courtney, many there's no chance you won't be there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sean, you're such a great prognosticator. <laughs> Michael, there's no chance you won't be there. <laughs> All right, are we? Uh, are we done? We are. Great, I move we adjourn. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Good night, Joyce. Good night, Joyce, thank you. All right, all those Thanks, in favor? Bye. Jean? Aye. Neil, aye. Courtney? Aye. Carol? Aye. Michael? Aye. Cindy? Aye. Jokes. <laughs> Too late for that. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>